Hello everybody, Flaming Shark back with another video. We're jumping into what I believe should be episode 9 of Danganronpa Trigger Happy- No, oh, Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair. I did that in episode 3, which recently dropped. I'm recording this on Thanksgiving night. It is 11.30, so it is 30 minutes before Black Friday. But uh, November 25th, 2021, um, had a nice dinner, had some turkey, had a turkey leg, a little extra turkey, some green beans, some mashed potatoes, a few rolls, some, a uh, little bit of pie. It was good food. Didn't, didn't go crazy, but had a little bit of everything. Really delicious. Turkey came out really good. All, all the stuff was great for anyone who celebrates Thanksgiving. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Ironically, this video probably is coming out after Christmas. This legitimately could, I, I'd have to do the math. This might even be the first uh, Danganronpa video of 2022, but for me, it's Thanksgiving. So I forgot to buy skills and I can't buy skills right now. Oh wait, yes I can. Okay, so, so I have five sauces. So we kind of know what these things do now, so. Okay. Don't think I care. Don't think I care that much about these, but maybe. No, definitely not lost in thought. I don't want this. Um, this could be relevant, but I think if it's, yeah, if it's for the nonstop debate, no, I don't think I care. That uh, I think these are fine. Decreases delay between firing truth bullets. That's relevant to the rebuttal showdown, the truth blades. That might actually... I, I like the name too, Trigger Happy. I might go for that. You know, memorizing the I, I don't need that. Melodious voice. Okay, I think I'm actually going to take Melodious voice. Uh, Shoutouts to Sayak, uh, but also I wanted Melodious voice purely because I feel like I need the most help in the PTA. I think that's where I'm gonna get fucked. Uh, so I, I wanna play mean, but after last time, I feel like that's kind of stupid. So let's just chill on kind. We'll stick with mean at logic difficulty because I want the logic stuff to be as hard as it can. I don't know if my controller was going crazy or if I was just sucking on the action stuff because it was on mean. If there is any delay on my controller, then that's like just screwed. It doesn't feel like it, but I, at the end of the video, at the end of the last episode, I recorded the night before this, uh, the episode eight. I basically went over, I, I, I had rewatched this stuff and I basically went over my revised thoughts on everything. I have a lot of theories. It could be Akane, it could be Peko, it could be Sonya, it could be Fuyuhiko, it could be Hiyoko. There's so many people that are suspicious here. And yes, the homeless, hopeless memories reflect in the twilight. And there's also the mystery of just how much of this is real. And it are, was there a real murder that took place? Could this have somehow been like a play or something? And, and if they really were students at Hope's Peak, how does this relate to the class of Hope's Peak students from the first game? Is it possible that both of those happened simultaneously? And what does that mean for this game? There's so many questions I have, and I like how case one and case two, even early in the game, we're already starting to try and unravel the mystery of the existence of both this game and the, and, and the first game simultaneously. Let's enter the class trial. Trial. All rise. That just reminds me. Now then, let's begin with a simple explanation of the class trial. I'm not gonna lie. Can I actually... I think we're gonna try this. Um, because they're actually getting really loud, their voices. Uh, I, I feel like their voices are a little bit louder in this game. Um, so I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try editing the, the, the voice audio by one, see what that does.
But yes, the simple ex uh, explanation of the class trial, normal stuff. Let's listen to how that sounds. During the class trial, you will present your arguments for who the killer is and vote for who done it. Yeah, I think this will be fine. I think this is actually the sweet spot for the voices. If you vote correctly, then only the blackened will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong person... Poor Mahiru, I guess we'll, 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 we'll avenge you. Don't worry, girl. I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and that person will earn the right to leave this island. Also, I had a pathetic performance in the first trial, so I am... Um, that's another reason why I was studying everything. I, even though this is really complicated, I want to make sure I'm on my A-game. I want to I wanna redeem myself for the first class trial. Oh, no matter how many times I hear it, it's such a cruel rule. Yeah, it's definitely a cruel rule, no doubt. Now then, let's first discuss the motive. That masterpiece of gaming, Twilight Syndrome Murder Case. Honestly, I could imagine that, like, a version of that that wasn't, like... I could honestly imagine something like that game actually being a cult classic. What? Who cares about that game? We definitely do, Ibuki. The outcome of this trial should be determined by whether or not we find Mahiru's killer. Well, it's directly relevant. Nevertheless, we shouldn't ignore it. After all, that game is the motive this time. So it would seem. Yeah, you're right. Then let's try discussing that first. Sure. I'm sure everyone who's beaten the game already knows that it's based on an actual murder case. Some of us have not beaten that game. Give us a detailed explanation. Yep. It means Twilight Syndrome Murder Case is a non-fiction game. That is what Monokuma wants us to think at the very least. Additionally, some of us are characters in that game too. Some of us are characters in a video game? And the ironic thing is neither are not, uh, yeah, Nekomaru and Pekko are gonna freak so, out. No. I sure. think it's better if we clarify who the characters in the game are first. Uh, girl A is Mikan, girl B is Hiyoko, girl C, I believe girl C was Ibuki, uh, girl D is Mahiru, girl E is Sato, guy F is Fuyuhiko, and the first dead body is Fuyuhiko's sister. Characters in the game were girl A, girl B, girl C, girl D, girl E, boy F and the high school girl who got killed at the beginning. Yep. By using the staff roll after clearing, and yeah, this is in order actually. Well, no, 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 wait. Uh, no, I guess it's not, cause girl B, I'm pretty sure, girl B was Hiyoko, so they're not in order. And also, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to say Sayonji, not Hiyoko, cause the rest of them have their last names or their, you know, kind of in a uh, their, their family names, except for, uh, Except for Hiyoko. So I think that was just a mistake in the translation. I should be able to figure out who's who. First character the player was able to control was girl A. The true identity of girl A, it's probably Mikan. I see. Take that. Girl A is probably Mikan Sumiki. <laughs> yes. That timid tone. That definitely sounds like girl A. Yep. Based on the list of names in the staff role, I can't think of anyone else who would be girl A. Why am I in a video game? That's an infringement of my right to privacy. Incredibly ironic, but she's not wrong. Ha! A nasty, trashy pig shit like you doesn't have any privacy rights. Ironic, given who girl B is. Ah, a nasty, trashy pig shit. <laughs> I feel like I heard that in the game, too. Yep. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> She's right. The one who said that was Girl B. I see. Pick that. Girl B was short and foul-mouthed. She's probably Hiyoko. Short and foul-mouthed? That's like the complete opposite of me. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's move on. Next is girl C. I like how Nagito's like, I don't even want anything to do with this bullshit. Girl C, huh? Her personality was hyper energetic and unique. Okay, so girl C is in fact Ibuki. 
Oh, it doesn't even say like, oh, who is that? <laughs> I see. Take that. Girl C is Ibuki. Girl C? Then I'll see you next Tuesday. Is, is, is that somehow like a lesbian joke? I, I mean, she's literally talking about Yuri like every five seconds or girl love as she puts it. It is slippery when wet, right? Let's move on to <laughs> I love how Chiaki just no-sold it. Girl D, huh? There's only one person who's always had a camera with them. I see! Take that! Girl D is my hero. The victim in this case. Damn, listen to Johnny there, the way he said that. Yeah, that's correct. Let's skip Girl E and talk about Guy F. Interesting, because we don't know who Girl E is. Interesting. He's Guy F. Yes, that'd be Fuyuhiko. I see! Yep. Aren't you Guy F, Fuyuhiko? Huh. <laughs> I was in a game? <laughs> That's fucking stupid. <laughs> Lol. <sighs> that reminds me. Wasn't there another person whose last name was also Kuzuryu? Another person? Yep, little sis. It was one of the names on the staff roll. The names were Sumiki, Koizumi, Sayonji, Miyota, Sato, Kuzuryu, and then another Kuzuryu. Yep. Hold on. Why do you keep saying there were two Kuzuryus? Because there were. It's not like I'm wrong. That's how it's written on the staff roll. Yep. Since you beat the game, you probably know what this actually means, right? Of course. The reason Fuyuhiko's last name, Kuzuryu, appears twice. It's true I have a hunch, but... To call me out like that, Nagito. You're definitely someone I shouldn't mess with. The reason Fuyuhiko's last name, Kuzuryu, appears twice, it's probably because he had a little sister. I can prove it with this! Yep. In the game, Guy F, Kuzuryu, mentions that he has a little sister. <laughs> yep. Hmm? What do you mean, little sister? This is what Guy F said in the game. Yep. That bitch! What the, uh, what the hell did she do, it's my little sister? It's pretty clear. There's no doubt that Guy F had a little sister. That was on the screen really fast. I didn't actually advance the game there. Plus, the sister actually appeared in the game. That's why the name Kuzuryu appeared twice. Sure. By the way, what role did Guy F's little sister, the other Kuzuryu, play? You probably noticed, right? It's interesting because we're pushing this immediately towards Kuzuryu. But the way Nagito was cocking, he was he was pointing Hiyoko kind of as the criminal, which is interesting. Yep. I don't really want to say it myself, but I need to move the conversation forward. The only character in the game I could see being Fuyuhiko's little sister is the high school girl who died at the beginning. I see! Yep. The dead high school girl who was the first victim in the game is the only person I can think of. Yep. That bitch, girly, was it? That bitch, what the hell did she do to my little sister? Yeah, yeah, it's really Based fast. Based on Guy F's tone in the game, it's clear that girl E is not his little sister. Yep. So if the only person left is the dead high school girl, then she must be Fuyuhiko's sister. Why do you sound so fucking happy? That's a winning personality you got there. True. <laughs> winning personality? Ah! Are you praising me? Oh my god, Nagito just wants head pats. I was being sarcastic, dumbass. Hey, you said the game is a work of non-fiction. That means Fuyuhiko's little sister is... Yeah, I have a little sister. Something wrong with that? It's just a fucking game. Don't go mixing up some video game with reality. Yeah. Only one problem with that. It's not just a game. It's definitely based on true events. That's why it's the motive. Don't go making shit up, bastard. Damn. If she was the type to die easily, I'd have fucking killed her myself a long time ago. One, that's BS. Two, I actually understand his point on the first part. I mean, when I first entered Hope Speak Academy, she, she was mouthing off to me as usual and sent me off. Okay, no, 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 that's legit because we, when I first entered, okay, so that was before the, the loss of memory. It, it happened just the other day. 
Uh, yeah, not quite. Um, about that. You're probably thinking like that because you've lost your memories. Yeah, of course. Shut the fuck up! You be quiet! Yeah, he doesn't want to accept that for obvious reasons. I mean, none of us do, but for Fuyuhiko, it's a little deeper than the rest of us now. I see. So you're never gonna accept that that game is based on true events, huh? I mean, that would be accepting that his sister died and he doesn't remember it, so it makes sense. Okay, I understand your attitude toward this class trial now. Nagito, you seem to be doubting Fuyuhiko a lot. Do you suspect he's the killer? It sounds like he suspected Hiyoko of being the killer. A mystery that easy would make me feel sad. It wouldn't be good enough to serve as everyone's stepping stone. Of course. That's why I'd be much happier if Fuyuhiko wasn't the killer. Oh my god, Nagito! Okay, you're starting to act weird again. A little bit, but I get his point. Anyway, now we've established who all the characters in the game are. And that's very important, yep. Girl A is Mikan. Girl B is Hiyoko. Girl C is Ibuki. Girl D is Mahiru. Guy F is Fuyuhiko. I hope Gundam says, who the fuck is girl E? I mean, obviously he's not going to say that. But. And the first victim in the yep. game, that dead high school girl, is Fuyuhiko's little sister. But what about girl E, who is probably the real killer? Which again, girl E could either be Pekko, Akane, or Sonya. That's just a story in a fucking game. I don't know about that, and I don't know whether you yourself believe that, Fuyuhiko. If so, then girl E is Miss Sato. But then, who the- what the fuck? What? There's no way this- I don't know, because we saw her die in the- in the- at the end of the game. Yeah, at the end of the game, she dies though, Sato, so- Could it be? The same Miss Sato who likes white rice? That's probably a reference to something. I don't know what Sato you're talking about, but I don't think she's relevant to this case. It's possible that she's not relevant, but it's really weird. Maybe it's related to Gundam's last name, since they're both really plain names. What, Tanaka? What the heck is that wild connection? Tanaka may be an ordinary family name, but it's far better than Sato or Suzuki. Damn, randomly shitting on Suzuki. I Dude, you better not let Minoru Suzuki hear that. He'll kill your ass. Goddamn. Also, I'm involved in a story where the main character's name, uh, family name is Sato, and, and and was purposely chosen because it was meant to be like one of the most generic like Japanese family names, which is really funny. And he also has a strange rivalry going on. Hey, no one cares about that. Hurry up and talk about the mystery of the game. Don't worry, Monokuma, we're gonna get to it. Huh? What do you mean, mystery of the game? My, my, you don't know. I heard that girl E got killed. True. What? No way. Is that true? Now Monami's just being blatantly obvious she's working with Monami. What the hell is this? Why? Why? Getting killed is so violent, don't you know? It's like she's, like, acting with it. She's making it look more and more obvious she's working with him, his accomplice. It's so weird. My, such awful times we live in. Why did this happen? She's, like, literally not even, like, trying anymore. You guys are definitely friends. For real. So the mystery of the game is the murder of girl E, correct? And yeah, and uh, Mahiru was murdered in the same way, but Mahiru was girl D. Then let's hurry up and solve it. Let's first figure out why girl E was killed. Because... God, who the fuck killed girl E though? Because it was girl E who killed... Oh man. The reason girl E was killed, I should be able to assume why based on the content of the game. Because girl E was the killer, yes. I see. The reason girl E was killed is because she killed the first victim in the game. Yep. Which means girl E was killed as revenge for the dead high school girl. Yes. That all sounds about right. What do you think, Fuyuhiko? Apparently girl E was killed to avenge your little sister. Yep. 
You're fucking persistent. I don't care what that game said at all. But the implication is that Fuyuhiko, but even if all this happened, Fuyuhiko killed Fuyuhiko or Sparkling Justice, it could be either one, killed uh girl E to get killed Sato to get revenge for uh Fuyuhiko's sister. But it, is it is that true? Girl E, she, she killed the first victim? In order to make that clear, we need to know more about the case involving the first victim's murder. Sure. It's the murder that occurred in the music room. I knew it would come up, so I prepared in advance. Yeah, we got uh, three truth bullets relating to that. We got the fish tank. I think it was the fish tank, the window, and there was like one other that I believe we got. Oh, wow. Look, I made a map of the music room's surroundings, which was the stage of the first case. Sure. Oh, this is giving me Ace Attorney Investigation 1 vibes. I believe it was Ace Attorney Investigation 1. I'm surprised you went to all this trouble. Yeah, I believe it was... I, I'm thinking of a specific case, but I don't want to be specific. Mapping is second nature to retro game fans. Damn, sure, fair. Classic dungeon crawler RPGs have a first person point of view, so mapping as you play is a basic. We get it! Let's talk about that later so we can focus on the case. Aw, poor Chiaki wanted to geek out. Then, I'll start explaining. Sounds good, girl. Girl A, Girl B, Girl C, and Girl D were at the entrance hall when they heard the sound of glass breaking. Sure. Immediately, they climbed the stairs to the second floor and headed to where they heard that sound. Yep. Girl E was in front of the music room on the second floor, and she confirmed that the sound came from in there. Okay. But the door to the music room was locked. Sure. So Girl D went to get the key from the office, and when the five of them were finally able to go inside, they found the victim's body, dead from a blow to the head. Because the music room's window was broken, the girls thought the killer escaped through there. All right, makes sense. The sound of breaking glass that they heard at the entrance hall seemed to confirm that. Plus, Girl E's school swimsuit was stolen, so they concluded that the escape killer was some pervert. Sure. How does that sound? Yep, an understandable explanation. Just as expected from the ultimate gamer who excels at clearing games. Of course. But it wasn't a pervert, right? Wasn't the real killer Girl E? Obviously. Girl E was waiting outside the music room for the other girls after she killed the first victim. That definitely seems to be the case. Did she lock the music room from the outside? Then she would have totally needed the key from the office. Which means, Girlie was hiding that key. We can assume she used it to lock the music room after she left it. But, Girl D was the one who went to the office to get the key to the music room, right? Sure. By the way, since it was never mentioned in the game, we can exclude the possibility of there being a spare key. Fair enough, Nagito, that's a fair point, because it would have it would have been relevant. You can lock the music room from the inside, right? So from there, Girl E broke the window and escaped and sprinted to the front of the music room as fast as she could before the others arrived. She would have passed by the entrance hall where the other girls were waiting if she tried to do that. That's also a fair point. Then forget this. Aw, Nekomaru's trying to be an intellectual and think things through and he's just like, God damn it. It's not cute to see an old guy sulk. Oh, shut up, Kazuichi. You're never helpful. Hey, is Girl E really the killer? We haven't reached an answer yet. Based on the details of the game, it's no mistake that Girl E, who is waiting in the hallway, is the killer. Then what did Girl E do after killing the girl inside the music room? I guess I need to clear that up first. Are we going to a nonstop debate? We haven't had one yet. Yes, we are. Our first nonstop debate. All right, here we go. Our first, our first, uh, oh boy. Oh boy. Interesting. After she killed the first victim in the music room. Here we 
We don't need any of this stuff. Okay, broken fish tank. Sure. 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 No, not that. Uh, this. Sure. Okay. What did Girl E do? She just broke the window in the music room and escaped outside. I'm feeling the broken vase photo, but we'll see. So how did Girl E get from outside the school? Sure. To the front of the music room. Okay. To go back to the music room from outside, you need to go through the entrance hall. Plus, at the entrance hall, the other four girls should have been there. At the entrance hall, the girls hmm. heard the sound of the window shattering. How was she able to get past those four? Yeah. And wait in front of the music room. I think it's a broken vase photo. She probably used a hidden passageway. That's close. Twilight's hidden passageway is the world's best. That actually sounds pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. Twilight's hidden passageway. Okay. After she killed the first victim, what did Girl E do? She just broke the window and escaped out. So how did Girl E get to the front of the music? To go back to the music, you need to go through the entrance hall. Plus, at the end, the other four girls should have been there. Okay. At the entrance hall, they heard the sound of the window shut. No, that's wrong. Objection! Ah, got it. All right, one for one. That's a good start. I thought it through. First of all, the sound the girls heard wasn't the window breaking. I like this OST. It's... Weirdly calm. If it wasn't the window, then what broke to make that sound? The vase. A vase. <laughs> a vase. Vase? How low can you go? I mean, he did say a vase. After the murder, a broken vase was discovered in the classroom next to the music room. Yep. And of course, that's what uh, Mahiru or Girl D confronted Sato or Girl E with later on. So the sound of breaking glass that the four girls heard wasn't the music room's window. Sure. It was the sound of the vase breaking. Probably. Sure. Actually, the murder was nearly finished by the time the four girls met in the entrance hall. Girl E killed the victim in the music room, broke the window, and went to the office to get the key. Sure. With that key, she locked the music room from the hallway, returned the key to the office, and went back to wait in front of the music room. That all... Sounds about right. All she had to do was break the vase in the next door classroom as the four girls met by the entrance hall. To make them think the murder had just occurred and that the killer had just escaped. It was a great bait and switch, no doubt. So, when the four of them ran over after they heard the sound, Girl E acted like she had just rushed over too. Uh, I see. Now the mystery has been solved. Uh... Wait a minute! The mystery hasn't been solved yet! You haven't determined what the murder weapon was yet! That's true. Murder weapon? I guess it could have been the fish tank? Who cares about the murder weapon? We found out who the killer was! Damn, Mabuki's voice got really high there. High? I don't know. It sounded more childish than normal. Not cool! I went to all the trouble of making this death march, so you gotta stick with it to the end. Aw, Monokuma being sus. What the heck? You're so annoying! I'm sure it's gonna find a way to be relevant to the to our Mahiru's murder case. Fine, let's figure out the weapon. If this keeps up, I'm gonna feel like I need to shit. Sounds like Nekomaru in a nutshell. Which means I'll feel disgusting! Damn, bro. You're the disgusting one. Fair. <laughs> the weapon is pretty unconventional. The answer was revealed in the game, though. Now then, will you guys be able to figure it out? I'm assuming it's the fish tank. I don't really know what else it could be. An unconventional weapon that also appeared in the game. We're told we can't advance as long as we don't make that clear. Then I have to do it. I'll do it. 
What do you think the weapon is? I have no idea. I think it's the uh, fish tank. Was I out of line just now? Now then, there's something I need to tell you regarding the white noise and the non-stop debates. Some lines of white noise are actually very durable. You won't always destroy them in one shot. That's new. Durable white noise will chip away every time you shoot them with the silencer. Unless you completely destroy them, your time limit will not be replenished. By the way, yeah, yeah. It appears the debate is getting tougher, so I've obtained some very useful information. I heard there's a guy named Gun something. Apparently he has a skill that can increase the power of the silencer. Gun something. I wonder who it is. But I had a line just now. Well then, good luck and have fun. I didn't actually get that joke. I don't know what that was a reference to. I assume it's the fish tank. Oh, fish tank's actually loaded into the chamber, too. That is my guess, though. A weapon inside the music room, huh? Yep. What about broken glass? Isn't the cause of death a blow to the head? Hmm. Then she attacked her with the fish tank. I agree. That's too big to be a weapon. No? I think that's right. Then the piano. Why are you going even bigger? I don't the think it's a broken vase. conducts universal chaos. Nice. It's on that big a scale too? Yes, of course it is, Nekomaru. How about beating her with gravel instead? Ooh. If it's a weapon that was used to beat them to death. Gravel. It should have had blood stains. But it broke. Was there a weapon with blood stains on it? No. She beat her to death with her fists. No. Yeah, I think it's it's gotta be the fish the weapon tank. inside the music room, huh? What about broken glass? Isn't the cause of death a blood of the thin she attacked her with the fish tank? No, okay. Okay. Alright, I made a mistake, okay. A weapon inside the music room, huh? So then it's the What about broken glass? No. Isn't the cause of death a blow to the head? Okay, victim's crime scene photo. It's unconventional. It's unusual. Huh. The vase doesn't have any blood, though. She choked her, and then to make sure she... No. There's no way it's a swimsuit. Could it be gravel? Oh, this is really interesting. I honestly don't know. Then she attacked her with the fish. That's too big to be in the piano. Why are you going even big? The investigation conducts universe. It's on that big a scale too? How about beating her with gravel instead? No, oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't think Damn. that was right, but so it's her. A weapon inside this? the music room, huh? What about broken glass? Hmm. Isn't the cause of death a blow to the head? This is interesting. I wish I could see it larger, but I guess it doesn't matter. The piano is there. Obviously, I can't choose that. She has blood on her fists, on her hand. I don't think that means anything, but it's interesting. Oh, could, could maybe the vase was used and the body was no? That doesn't make sense. There's no way it's a swimsuit. But we don't know what the swimsuit is for. It could be the vase, but we're supposed to agree. Then she attacked her with the fish tank. That's too big to be a weapon. Then the piano. Why are you going even bigger? The investigation conducts universe. Could she have used the school swimsuit to cover her fists? And so the blood got on the swimsuit and then she got rid of the swimsuit, getting rid of the evidence, getting rid of the murder weapon in essence, because it was her fists. 
It's on that biggest. How about beating her with gravel instead? If it's a weapon that was used to beat, it should have had blood stains. That's a good point. Was there a weapon with blood stains on it? She beat her to death with her fists. No. Okay. So then it's Damn. probably the blood stains. A weapon inside the music room, huh? Blood stains. Blood stains. What about so, broken glass? Let me try the, the swimsuit on the blood stains. That's too big to answer. The piano. That they use the swimsuit to clean up Why the blood stains. Why are you going stains. even? The investigation can. It's on that biggest. How about beating her with gravel? If it's a weapon that was used, it should have had blood stains. No. Yeah. I Damn thought that it. was pretty good. I thought that was actually pretty good reasoning, huh? A weapon inside the music room, huh? The vase? No. What about broken glass? Broken Isn't the glass. cause of death a blow to the head? Then she attacked her with the fish tank. Yeah. That's too big to be a weapon. Yeah. Then the piano. Shit. I can't believe I'm doing Why are this you again. Going even bigger. The investigation conducts you to- It's on that big a scale? How about beating her with gravel instead? If it's a weapon that was used to beat them to death, it should have had blood stains. No, okay. Was there a weapon with blood stains on it? She beat her to death with her fists! She beat her to death... It, apparently it appeared in the game. It has to be the vase, the music then? Room. What about broken glass? Isn't the cause of death a thing she attacked her with the fish tank? And destroyed the vase to, to hide evidence somehow? Then the piano. Why are you going even? The investigation conducts you. It's on that use the water too? to wash out the blood? I don't How know. How about beating her with gravel instead? If it's a weapon that was used to beat, it should have had blood stains. No. I have no idea. Okay. Yeah. Damn it. it looks like I made a mistake. I should pick it over one more time. And he doesn't say any. A oh, wow! Inside the music room, huh? Crime what about scene broken photo? glass? Isn't the cause of death a blow to the head? Yeah, it is. Then she attacked her with the fish tank. That's too big to be a weapon. Fish tank. Then the piano. Why are you going even bigger? What the hell is the it? Investigation conducts universal chaos. It's on that big a scale, too? I don't know. How about beating her with gravel instead? I don't have a clue. I honestly have no idea. If it's a weapon no that idea. was used to beat them to death, it should have had blood stains. I, I don't know. Damn it. Like, I honestly have no idea. It, I, I can't believe I'm lost again. I feel so dumb right now. Broken vase photo. She showed the picture of the vase, which, you know, proves the gimmick, but... Why would it be the crime scene photo? There's nothing in the crime scene photo except the piano. Oh, okay. Where's the rest of it? Fish tank. Tipped over fish tank, gravel and water were scattered everywhere. Okay. There's a broken window, but I mean they kind of disagree, but there was a broken window. All right, I'm going to try killer's escape route, I guess. What about broken glass? Well. Damn it. I honestly have no a weapon oh, inside the oh, music room. I huh? used the wrong one, didn't I? What about broken glass? Oh, well, even if I did, it doesn't matter. It's wrong either Damn. way. Well, I'm out of time. I'm a just gonna let the, the time run room. out. Yep, time's up. I lose. Woo! Game over! Let's go! Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we already saw this in the last, uh... Yeah. Hajime Inata, yay! Everyone my... loses. Yes, yes, let's retry. We will never give up! Hell yeah, full health, and hopefully a lot more time, because I have no idea what the murder weapon is. 
And I can't, like, absorb anything either. Weapon inside the music room. What about broken glass? Yeah, I can't absorb anything. Isn't the cause of death a blow to the head? Then she attacked her with the fish tank. That's too big to be a weapon. Then the piano. Why are you going even bigger? Wait, is it the fish tank the objecting to the blood stain? It's on that biggest scale. How about beating her with gravel instead? If it's a weapon that was you, it should have had blood stains. No, I was thinking because because the water would wash it away from the fish tank. But damn it, I'm like totally a lost here, guys. The music room, huh? What about broken glass? Isn't the cause of um, death a blow to the head? Jeez, what the hell? Then she attacked her with the fish tank. That's too big to be a weapon. Then the piano. Why are you going even bigger? The investigation can die. It's on that big a scale to- How about beating her with gravel instead? If it's a weapon that was used to beat them to death, beating her with it gravel? should have had blood stains. Was there a weapon with- She beat her to death with her fists! I'll try the gravel the again. What about broken glass? With the Isn't the cause of death thing she talked to with the That's too big to be then the piano. Why are you going the investigation? It's on that biggest How about beating her with gravel instead? Oh I got I agree it! Agree with that. Oh, it was gravel with the swim it was gravel in the swimsuit. Jesus Christ, it really was. I got it. The killer must have used gravel to attack the victim. Wow, okay. That was really, like, not obvious at all. Like, I, I'll give the game credit, but it's just, there was almost, I feel like there was almost too much, too many, like, there was, I don't, I don't remember anything in the game that really hinted to that at all. My goodness. I got it right. And I was just throwing things out there. Nice. <laughs> just as I thought, I'm chosen by the gods. I mean, Nagito's right next to you, and he would agree with that. You're not chosen at all, and gravel is impossible. It's too small to be a weapon. Not if you had something to hold it all together and use it and, like, bludgeon someone with it, and that was the s why the swimsuit disappeared. What if the gravel was put inside some sort of bag? Or a swimsuit? A bag? What kind of bag? If the weapon is something that appeared in the game, then so is the bag. And the only thing I can think of is the school swimsuit. Yep. If you tie the swimsuit like a bag and stuff it full of gravel, it'd make an effective weapon. Gravel inside the swimsuit? Hey! Even the Ace Attorney hey! would be astonished by such a fantastic idea! Yo! Ace of, even the Ace Attorney! Yo! That really is an Ace Attorney weapon if I've ever heard it. Holy crap, that's amazing. Yo, Abuki with the Ace Attorney reference. She actually referenced something that wasn't Yuri, even though that's debatable, actually, I guess. <laughs> depending on what part of Ace Attorney, you could argue that there is definitely Yuri and or Yaoi, depending on your interpretations. But for the killer, it's an idea that kills two birds with one stone. Man, that's so great. I can't... I'm so glad there was an Ace Attorney reference, because this game obviously took at least some of its inspiration from Ace Attorney. From Yakuden Saiben, as, I, as, as it's known in Japan. To make people think the killer is some pervert, it makes sense for a school swimsuit to be stolen. Yes, it kind of it kind of gives you a theory of someone that wouldn't be girl E, while also getting rid of the blood. Like it does multiple things at once for girl E. And if that swimsuit was used to make an improvised weapon, it have to be disposed of later. Yep. How about it, Monokuma? Are you satisfied now? This happiness you feel when the mystery you create is solved. Only producers know this feeling of ecstasy. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I like, didn't really solve it at all, so there's that. But uh, I, I, I definitely get what you're saying, Monokuma. But the real important talk begins now. Mahiru's death. Girl E had someone who can be called an accomplice. That person was actually Girl D. Yeah. Girl D. You're talking about Mahiru, right? Yep. Huh? Mahiru is the accomplice? What is this? What does that mean? Mm hmm. The piece of face that became an important clue in the music room murder. Girl D got rid of it. Yep. We learned that in day three, yep. And apparently, the reason Girl E committed murder in the first place 
was to protect Girl D. Yep. Girl D was being harassed by the victim. Girl E found out and tried to stop it. And they ended up getting into an argument. Yep. And she felt a rush of anger and ended up killing her. Yep. A bit like what happened in the second trial of the last game. But she should have had a clear murderous intent. I mean, she choked her out and then bludgeoned her to death. Yeah. She probably made her unconscious by accident. And from there, she couldn't go back. That is what Girlie described in the game. I, I, I somewhat understand that feeling. Oh, uh, what does that mean? You can? That's pretty scary. Yeah, that's a bit scary. I would agree with Ibuki on that one. But Girlie was also killed by someone on the fourth day. Or the game's last day. I might as well ask just in case. Who do you think killed Girl E? You would imagine it's Fuyuhiko? Girl E's killer. Right now, the only person I can think of is that guy. Yeah, Guy F. I see! It should have been Guy F. Sure, it makes sense. Yep. Yep. A scenario where Guy F murders Girl E out of a burning, hellfire desire to avenge his murdered sister. I think Fuyuhiko would even admit that he would do something like that. Or at least he would talk like he would. But, but Guy F is... What? It's just a story in a video game, isn't it? That's all you can say. If that game is telling the truth, it'd be a huge problem for you. Hey! Clear this up for me. Those of you who appeared as characters in the game, do you remember this incident? Nope. Th that is, I'm terribly sorry, but... They don't remember! That's obvious! Because their school memories were, like, totally stolen! Yep. Even if I don't remember, I already know! It's obvious that guy is the killer! Well, the killer of... Girl E, not Girl D. No one would kill a nice person like Mahiru besides a piece of shit menace to society like Fuyuhiko. I kind I get your vibe, but it's a little it's a little pot caught in the kettle black. Girl E and Mahiru were killed by that guy. <sighs> you sure do talk a lot of shit. She does. Well, I'm used to it by now. But does Mahiru's murder have anything to do with that game? Perhaps the two are unrelated. It's possible. I. It's a little sus that you're the one to say, oh my god, I just realized his ex is a freaking knife and fork. What the hell? Now I want to see Mahiru's ex. No, the game and Mahiru's death are probably related because the Mahiru was positioned in the same way as Girl E, and I assume that was by the real killer to put suspicion on Fuyuhiko because Fuyuhiko potentially killed uh, his sister's murderer in the same way and left them in the same manner. In actuality, there's an important shared point between Girlie and Mahiru's murder. It's... Well, I guess it would be the metal bat, I guess. Yeah, I guess we could say the metal bat. I can prove it with this. Take that! I'm not sure the two events are unrelated. At the very least, the killer has definitely played the game. Yep, that's true. As proof, Mahiru, who was killed in the beach house, and girl E, who was killed in the game, were both killed by a blow to the head with a metal bat. Yep. There's no way we can ignore that connection. Yep. Someone must have wanted to split her head open the exact same way they avenged the first victim. Hey, why don't you confess already? You're the one who killed Mahiru, right? Now, this makes Hiyoko look suspicious, but obviously Hiyoko wants revenge for Mahiru, so it makes sense why she's pushing so hard. Uh, but obviously, this is the exact reason Fuyuhiko wouldn't do this. It makes him look sus as fuck. You, you better cut that out right now! There is no way a stupid game could be the motive! You're dumb enough to believe that stupid game, and that's why you killed her as revenge! If you keep making up your mind like that... We're just going to go around in circles. That is true, Pekko. And it's true for you, Hiko may look suspicious. But don't you think that'd be too obvious? That is exactly my point, Pekko. What? What are you... I mean, 
There's a possibility that it's a trap set by the true killer. Oh my god, Fuyuhiko's like, oh my god, this hot, like, badass girl is protecting me and she's a swordswoman? Oh man. Trap? What do you mean? And listen how, like, childish her voice sounded there. The true killer played that game and most likely found out about the relationships between the characters. That person could be using that knowledge to try to set up Fuyuhiko. Yep. Are you saying that a completely different killer murdered Mahiru and used the game motive as their cover? That sounds about right. Isn't that what happened, Hiyoko? Oh my god, Pekko! Jesus Christ! Huh? Don't you understand? I'm saying you might be the true killer. I get why Pekko's saying that. <laughs> what is this? Like, I can only laugh. What are you even saying, you nasty toilet clogging bitch? She does clog toilets. Uh, I, I respect that. Unfortunately, I also do, and it's not fun. I think we've all been there. Unfortunately, I've probably been there more than the average person. Oh boy, Footprints on the Beach looks very sus, but it might be something else. What are you saying, you four-eyed troll? Four-eyed troll, wow. Accusing me of killing Mahiru? Yeah, I mean, she did seem to love her. <laughs> You're so mean! Why do you doubt Hyoko? Damn, Ibuki coming up to Hyoko's defense. Do you know where Hyoko was today? She was at the beach house, the scene of the crime. No, we agree with that. But I didn't go to the beach house. Ah, there we go. I was wishing Mr. Ants all day. And that's the lie. That's the lie right there. It's that second one. Yep, footprints on the beach will prove it. <laughs> yep. Why do you doubt? See, I'm do confident you know in this one. She was at the beach house. But I didn't go to the beach house. I was God damn it. Mr. Ants all day. God damn it. I was so close. I just missed it. What are you saying? You okay. accusing me of? <laughs> Why do you doubt? Do you know where Hiyoko was? She was at the beach house, the scene of the crime. But I didn't go to the beach house. No, that's wrong. Objection! Break. In a very video game style. Wait a minute. You should have been at the beach house, Hiyoko. Yep, you're lying, girl. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? Seriously, I told you I didn't! But you're lying. But these footprints in the sand in front of the beach house, aren't they yours? I don't have such ugly footprints. They're probably Mekons based on how ugly they are. Don't decide that based on ugliness. Oh, I mean, at least Mekon's sort of standing up for herself there. Huh. They're not Hyoko's footprints? That's strange. The footprint I collected from your room matches these footprints perfectly. Collected? I never gave you permission to collect that, you nasty pedo! Damn! I love that she's throwing out the P word, too. She's such a sus. Plus, the footprints left in the sand were facing away from the beach house. Yeah, we'll see. I don't trust Pekko. I, I, I don't think it's going to be Pekko, because I really, I originally had her pegged along with Nagito as, a, as like, my main two to survive the whole game. Um, but we'll see. I might be wrong. There's definitely things, like the fact that she was wet and the water bottles... It's possible there's something going on there that she maybe cleaned the blood off of herself. Which means, when the owner of these footprints went inside the beach house, they used a different entrance. Of course, Akane just straight up had blood on her. A different entrance? Are you talking about the door facing the road that Mahiru's body was leaning against? Huh. Are you saying, when that person went inside the beach house, the body hadn't appeared yet? The door was still accessible when they went in, and wasn't when they left. Yeah. Which means something happened in between those two events. Isn't that right, Hiyoko? Yeah, I, I believe that is true. Oh, I remember now. I remember when I went to the beach house. Oh, uh, you better start telling the truth now, little lolly. Hmm, so you finally decided to confess. I'm pretty sure you guys already know this, but going for walks in the morning is my daily routine. I thought you just stayed in bed and ate candy. I've never heard of that daily routine before. Exactly. And that's when I went to the beach house. I 
I went there on my morning walk. I see. If you went there during your morning walk, that doesn't have anything to do with the case at all. And Akane, of course, immediately going along with it. Don't believe her so easily, dumbass. She's obviously lying. Huh? It's a lie? <laughs> oh my god, Akane. People who call other people liars are usually liars themselves. Damn. Uh, I don't know. Phoenix Wright's pretty, pretty honest for the most part. If you say I'm lying, prove it. Can you even prove that I'm lying? All right. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> There's no way a bunch of worthless idiots like you guys would be able to do that. You're not helping your case, Hiyoko. I really don't think you did it, but God, girl. All right. Time for another nonstop. We haven't had anything but nonstop so far. I feel like this case is going to go on forever. Uh, yeah. Letter on Mahiru should do it. I did go to the beach house. But only during my morning walk. I think it's right there. I didn't go any other time. I think it's right there. Let her on Mahiru. Then you didn't meet up with Mahiru at the beach house? <laughs> Obviously not. Saying I met up with her when I never even saw her? Well, that one's... Is this a panel of idiots? That's an even a more obvious one. I honestly feel like either one should work, but we'll I use on the second the... one. But only during my... I didn't go any... Then you didn't meet at the beach house? Yeah! I'll be saying I met up with her when I never even saw her? No? Okay, I guess we're going with the morning did... walk one, then. I did go to the beach, but only during my morning walk. Okay, that works, no, too. that's wrong. Objection! I mean, I, 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 yeah, that one I'm not mad about getting wrong. I mean, either one works. Only during your morning walk, huh? Will you still claim that after you take a look at this letter? I honestly feel like that's one of those scenarios where either one should have worked with that evidence. I was going to tell you in person, but I couldn't find you, so I put this in your mailbox. About what we discussed earlier, is it okay if we change the place in time? I want you to come to the beach house on the second island at 2.30 p.m. It seems there's someone who wants to interfere with our meeting. Let's keep it a secret. Until then, let's try not to see each other for a while. It would be bad if they started suspecting us for no reason. Yoko Sayanji. That letter! It's the one Mahiro had, right? Yep, and it was thanks to you that we have this, Mikan. I see. So Hiyoko was able to arrange a meeting with Mahiru by exchanging letters with her. Yeah, very basic way of doing so. But what is that letter? I'm serious, I don't know. It's possible that that was not from Hiyoko. I thought it was weird that Hiyoko signed it. Oh snap, I remember now. I totally saw you. Running away crying. Huh? There was that, yep. Me and Hajime met up at the diner around 3 p.m. to go to the beach. Yep. I saw you about 30 minutes later, so it should have been around 3.30 p.m. Yep. I see. So if she met Mahiru at 2.30 p.m., killed her, then ran away afterward, I think 3.30 p.m. is a reasonable time for you to have witnessed Hyoko. Yep. You're wrong! You're totally wrong! Now that you mention it, you also passed by the diner Fuyuhiko. So you should have seen Hyoko too, right? No, I didn't. It's just a coincidence that I passed by the diner. I wasn't even paying attention to the beach house. I went straight back to my cottage after I saw you guys. I didn't see anyone during that time. Fair enough. For some reason, that sounds suspicious too. Yeah. It's the truth. Deal with it. Damn, it almost sounds like Fuyuhiko's trying to protect someone there. Just leave him alone. It'd be a waste of time to question him any further. The fact that Pekko's leading this as much as she is has me very concerned that she's, she's the killer. Anyway, that letter in Kazuichi's testimony says it all. You were meeting up with Mahiru at the beach house. Because she's clearly a smart girl, and she's doing what she can to lead us down a certain path. I mean, with, with uh, Hiyoko, it's obviously because Hiyoko's a sus. Seriously? I don't know. I didn't even write that letter. I honestly believe her, because why would you sign your name? That's just... I, I'm telling the truth. I really, really don't know. But of course, she is willing to fake cry, so... <laughs> It's the boy who cried wolf, right? Is she really crying? Or is she faking it? When she actually cries, you don't know if it's real or not. 
She's probably faking it. Exactly. It's literally the boy who cried wolf. We can assume she summoned Mahiru with the intention of killing her all along. It's possible, but unlikely. That's why she wrote a letter to let her know where to meet, so the others wouldn't find out. And then you went ahead to the beach house, hid yourself in a specific place, and waited for Mahiru. And this is where the gummy's gonna come into play. There's evidence for that, too. Hmm. The only place I can think of where Hiyoko was hiding is probably that place, right? Yeah, we're gonna use the gummy. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. This is like straight Ace Attorney. Oh, my. This is literally an Ace Attorney thing. Here. It's right there. The place where Hiyoko was hiding. Are you talking about the closet? I think that's a new feature, and they didn't even mention anything about it. Yes, that's right. The gummy candy we found on the floor is the evidence. I mean, that's not definitive because anyone could have had the gummy, even if she likes the gummies. But also, again, yeah, this is obviously planted by someone. Yoko, your favorite candy is gummies, correct? What's a gummy? I've never eaten something like that before. And then Yoko says some bullshit like that. <laughs> I have captured the true character of this mystery. What the fuck, Gundam? Hiyoko, who summoned Mahiru to the beach house, hid inside the closet like a familiar. When she saw her chance, she attacked her like an evil spirit and left the beach house like a swift wind. I think you're a little off, Gundam. But Hiyoko miscalculated that Mahiru's body would be blocking the door at that time. Because of that, she was only able to leave from the beach side door and ended up leaving her footprints. <laughs> we have presented the proof. My four dark devas of destruction didn't even need to come out. I still want to see your four dark devas of destruction, Gundam. I would love to see them. It's a trap. This is obviously someone's trap. I mean, I think it is, but Hiyoko's acting so sus that, like, I get why the other characters don't believe her. Who's someone? Whose trap is it? Possibly Pekko. It, it must be that one person you know the one with the mask maybe okay now we're going into okay so red herring number one uh we're through the fuhiko or fuhiko now we're gonna get into the shining sauce i think it's gonna come down to i feel like it's probably either akane or peko i feel like they're the two that i i, I think are the most it's gonna be i feel like it's one of those two and, and right now, Pekko, to me, looks like the most suspicious by a mile, but Akane, I'm not ruling out. The one with the mask? There was a suspicious mask at the beach house, right? Whoever was wearing that could be the real killer. You're the one who wore that mask and killed Mahiru, right? Why? Now that's just dumb. There's no way I'd wear such a childish mask. Is your brain fried or something? Damn. That is right. It cannot be Hyoko. That mask belongs to Sparkling Justice! Huh? Sparkling what now? Oh, trust me, you're gonna become a Sparkling Justice fan if you want to get inside Sonya's panties, Ibuki, and you probably do, and you probably have a better chance than Kazuichi, so... Just listen to her probably relay that damn catchphrase again. That mask says it all! Sparkling Justice is hiding on this island! I don't know. I'm kind of leaning towards Sparkling Justice is just a red herring, and they're not even here, but they could be a red herring and they are here. Which means the legendary serial killer Sparkling Justice is the one who killed Mahiru. I doubt that. Why you? If you continue to say such foolish things, I shall tear you limb from limb. I mean, I don't know about that last part, but I kind of feel that vibe, Gundam. Don't blame Miss Sonia. It's just a difference between cultures. A uh, culture shock, you know? I don't know about that. Yoko, why don't you just admit it already? You're being unreasonably stubborn. It's all in your head. Oh, why can't you understand? I'm not the killer. It's true that Yoko is suspicious, but there's something strange. Something doesn't make sense. Can't help but feel like we're being directed by... Bro. Yeah, I think it's pretty obvious who's directing us. Now, it doesn't mean Pekko's the killer, but... Trash can. Ooh, I I'm gonna have to read the gummy bag. 
I shall render my verdict upon this mystery's conclusion. Okay, I want to read the gummy bag. Strawberry, melon, grape, and orange. Piyoko is the sinner who killed Mahiru! Damn. Uh, I'm telling you, it's a trap! There's no doubt. You went to the beach house, right? Yes, she did. Uh, oh, that is... She did. And weren't you also hiding in the closet? Mm, no. So that's when you dropped the gummy. I'm just going for it. No, that's wrong. Objection! I'm not even going to listen to the rest of it. Let's just go for it. I'm feeling it right now. I'm sorry, guys. About that gummy, did Hyoko really drop it? I'm getting a little hyped now. We're starting to get good. This start trial is about to get fire. But now we're still going to start to accuse the less obvious people. The only one childish enough to eat gummies is that midget over there. Maybe. You're a midget too, you know. You're the one who worries about never getting taller. Jesus. It's true Hyoko likes to eat gummies, but she only eats a specific brand. The brand of gummies you eat only have strawberry, melon, grape, and orange flavors, right? I actually could, I feel like, I, I really like gummies, um, but I feel like every time I eat them, they feel like the absolute most empty calories ever, and then they make me, like, want to die. Uh, but I do like them, so I haven't eaten them in a long time, but maybe I'll have some soon. Maybe I'll have some even in a video. Like, in a in a Danganronpa video. <laughs> that would be cute. Even though you wouldn't see it, because... No base cam, but... Maybe one day, maybe one day. But right now, the logistics don't really work out for me to play games with a face cam. I'm not getting into specifics, but... It's not coming for a little while, at least. Huh? But what about the lemon flavor? Nope! The... The gummy at the crime scene was yellow, so it obviously looked like it was lemon flavored. I mean, it could be melon, I guess, but it's unlikely. Huh? That gummy is yellow? And it's not mine! The ones I eat don't have any yellow gummies! That was the mistake! What? Uh oh That's right. None of the gummy bags in her cottage had any yellow ones. Oh, the, 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 there's the flaw. Then we can't assume Hiyoko is the one who dropped that yellow gummy. See? Didn't I tell you? It's definitely a trap! That doesn't mean it's Pekko, but it does feel like Pekko's setting up Hiyoko. That doesn't mean Pekko did it, but I am kind of leaning... I, I it hard, It's hard not to lean towards Pekko the way this is going. Uh, damn it! Who would set a trap like this? I'll get my revenge. I'm gonna bop you on the head with all my might. I swear to God, she's six. What the fuck? Hold on, you little bitch. You think you're in the clear just because of a little gummy? Don't be stupid. I'm not done backing you into a corner yet. That's fair, honestly. All right, another non-stop. It's interesting. We're getting a ton of non-stops. We haven't gone into any of the other games, which to me tells me we're so far away from... I mean, to be fair, we haven't gotten to the halfway mark yet, so we obviously have a long way to go. We're not done with Hyoko yet. There's still a huge piece of evidence left. You're talking about the footprints near the beach house, right? It's true. That's an important piece of evidence. Sure. And we can thank Mahiru for it. It's gonna be Iron Barred Window. What does that mean? There's, gonna, there's another way to escape. Mahiru used her last ounce of strength and blocked the door to the road. Thanks oh, to her. Mikan's autopsy we report. We have the evidence we need. It's actually going to be Mikan, Mikan's That's autopsy wrong. report. Yep. I left those footprints during my morning walk. No. I don't believe that, but this part. We're not done with Hyok. There's still a huge. You're talking about the foot. It's true. That's an important piece of evidence. And we can thank Mahiru for it. What does that mean? Mahiru used her last ounce of strength and. God damn it. Block the door to the right. We have the evidence. That's Don't worry, we'll get there. We'll get back there in a second. Walk. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think I'm right. I We're think the you. autopsy There's report will prove it because her death was instantaneous. An, take... What is that? Mahiru used her last ounce of strength and. No, that's wrong. Objection! Yeah, because her death was instantaneous. Mahiru didn't block the door. Her death was instant. Yep. Instant death? Yep. <laughs> like a video game. According to my autopsy, yes, 
There's no doubt that Mahiru died instantly. Look at Mikan being so useful. If you keep making shit up, I'll fucking kill you! Damn, he's getting even more aggressive. Although last time he did say he'd sell her fucking ass to a whorehouse, so. <laughs> I'm sorry. And before they end up being a couple. Ryuhiko, you cannot do that. Only a coward threatens women. Damn, she it was a little robotic there, but Sonia was very firm. I'm pretty sure her death was instant, too. I mean, her injury was only a single blow. Mm. That's why Mahiru isn't the one who blocked the door. Someone else used her body to block it. It's interesting that Sparkling Justice was just brought up of, like, Sonya thinks it's Sparkling Justice, and we completely moved on. It's interesting that Sparkling Justice barely came up at all. Is this someone else? For now. The killer, of course. They're the one who blocked the door with Mahiru's body. To make it look like Hiyoko did it. That's why there were bloody drag marks left on the floor. But why did the killer block the door? Make the first person who found the body look sus? Just ask Kyoko. She's the killer after all. I don't think so, Mr. Kuzuryu. Seriously, that's not true! Let's assume Hiyoko is the killer. Wouldn't that mean she's also the one who dragged the body? And she's by far the smallest individual of our group. Not that Mayu's that if big. If she handled a body that bloody, I think her clothes or skin would have been stained with blood. And of course there's that too. Huh? But when I saw her, she was... Not bloody. She was crying. She was clean. Yep. Besides her tears. See? I told you I wasn't the killer! Yay! With this, my innocence has been proven! Eh, I think we might have a little more debate about it, but we're getting there, Hiyoko. I won't let you look down on me! There we go, here we go. Time for a... Time for a, uh... We haven't decided that yet! Rebuttal showdown with Fuyuhiko. Hey, Fuyuhiko. Why do you keep insisting that Hyoko is the killer? I don't think Fuyuhiko's the killer, though. Shut up! I'm telling you, she's the killer! That little bitch is definitely the killer! Jesus, that was like the strongest, like, rage we've heard from that VA. Holy crap. He's really getting into it. He's really mad. All right, rebuttal showdown. Here we go. Yeah, we'll have to figure out what what the deal is. If Mahiru didn't block the door, then Hiyoko did it. She killed Mahiru and blocked the door with Hiyoko is the only killer I could think of. Advance. If Hiyoko moved the body, so I'm not going to swing now. Then she should be covered in blood. Yeah, sure. So what, dumbass? There's a shower room inside the beach. After she moved the body, she just washed it off in the shower. The fact that Hyoko okay, was at the room beach the house can be proven by the footprints in the sand. Did you get all that, you bastard? Okay, that's fine. Sure. Yep, so shower what, room. So what, dumbass? There's a shower room inside the beach house. After she moved the body... Wait for it. She just washed it off in the shower. Allow me to cut through those words. Allow me to cut through those words. I like that line from Johnny. No, washing it off in the shower is impossible because the shower in the beach house was out of order. Out of order? Yep. I'm terribly sorry. I haven't had any time to actually repair it. Yeah, it was the water bottles that were used. And who was soaking wet? Then maybe she took her clothes off to move the body. And when she was done, she... Put them back on. She can't put on her kimono by herself, which means some other girl is going to have to become Hiyoko's new uh, dr uh, dresser. Are you saying I did something that perverted? I mean, that's not really perverted. Hiyoko took off her clothes before committing murder? No, that should be impossible. She can't get dressed by herself. <laughs> she wasn't wearing clothes at all. <laughs> She can't get undressed by herself. Oh, these are funny. Her clothes fused to her body. I see. Take that. Listen to me, Fuyuhiko. Hiyoko mentioned this before. Yep. I, I can't help it. I can't tie my kimono sash by myself. Which means Hiyoko can't change by herself. It's impossible for her to put on and take off her clothes. What? Oh, yeah. 
She couldn't even tie her sash on her own. That's why she couldn't take a bath and smelled bad. Of course, Akane would remember that. I, I didn't smell. And it only smelled a little. Honestly, just run with it, girl. Oh, wasn't changing inside the beach house prohibited in the first place? That's a good point. That's a good point. I actually forgot about that. Yes, if you broke the rules, I'm pretty sure Monokuma wouldn't have kept quiet. He might have if, if you had just murdered someone, though. Damn right! I'm such a stickler for the rules that even safari park rangers want nothing to do with me! I mean, you are a bear, after all. If she didn't change her clothes, then what did Hyoko do with the blood that got on her? She never got blood on her. Like I've been saying, yep. the blood wasn't on me in the first place, because I never touched Mahiro's body! Hey, if you think about it the other way around, does that mean whoever was covered in blood is suspicious? Akane. Yep. Because if so, I believe Akane was soaked with blood when we all met up to go to the beach. That's true. Didn't I tell you that was because I got beat up by Coach Nekomaru? Is Nekomaru about to say I don't remember that? I can attest to that. Oh, okay. If I hadn't gotten that rough with her, she never would have backed down. All right, all right, cool. There's your alibi. Doubt me of all people. You got some nerve. <laughs> oh man, Akane. All right. I'll bend your body in half so you're stuck in a bowing position for the rest of your life. That's pretty hardcore, girl. That actually sounds pretty cool. In a fucked up way, yes. The hell it does. <laughs> yeah, shut up, Kazuichi. Poor Kazuichi can never uh, give anything to us. Good old Soda. Hey, more importantly, I'm okay now, right? It's okay that I'm not the killer? Yeah, seems like it. We might double back to you, but probably not. See? I already told you. There's no way I'd kill Mahiru. Because Mahiru taught me how to wear a kimono, and she was very, very kind. Aww. There's no way I would kill a nice person like her. Why wouldn't you believe me earlier? I mean, that would have been a better argument, to be honest. You guys are stupid! Stupid, stupid! See how she's not going for the violent language, too? She Because she's being genuine right now? Hyoko, please don't cry. Everything is fine now, right? Not really. We still have to find out who the killer is, and uh, we have yet to start accusing Pekko, and I'm very scared. Shut the hell up, pig barf. I hope you get a hangnail and die. And then immediately she goes back to being Hyoko. <laughs> I'm sorry for being pig barf. I, I I can't help it. I mean, I just am pig barf, you know. More importantly, Fuyuhiko's behavior earlier was definitely strange. That is true. Being so worked up at accusing Hiyoko of being suspicious. Could it be? Does he actually have something else in mind? Hey Hiyoko, now that our suspicions have been addressed, can you tell us the truth? That would be nice. Huh? Even though you're not the killer. You still went to the beach house, right? Yeah. Like I said, it was a trap. Yeah, I got that already. So, can you give us the details about that trap? I would like to know too. It might lead to some kind of clue. That is the point here. Fine. You want me to talk, huh? Um, earlier this morning, Mahiru was the one who came up to me. Sure. She asked if we could meet up later. Sure. Huh? But didn't you say earlier? I lied. Yeah, she lied. Yep, she lied. Damn it! So that was a lie? Yes, it was, Ibuki. Because I thought it'd be doubted if I admitted it. So I figured it was better not to say anything. So, what was your answer to Mahiru's invitation? Yes, I assume. I told her it was fine. I mean, I didn't have a reason to say no. Unlike everyone else here, Mahiru was someone I wasn't embarrassed to be seen with. Aww. You always have to say something snide. True. At the time, we were supposed to meet around 2 p.m., but... Around noon, there was a letter inside my mailbox. Oh, there was a letter for both of them. A letter? Yeah, this one. And we haven't seen this before. God, whose handwriting was this? This is, and this handwriting looks the same as the handwriting that 
was sent to Mahiru by seemingly Fuyuhiko. Fuyuhiko's looking super sus. It seems there's someone who wants to interfere with our meeting. Let's keep it a secret. Until then, oh, yeah. I was going to tell you in person, but I couldn't find you, so I put this in your mailbox. About what we discussed earlier, is it okay if we change the place? I want you to come to the beach house on the second island. The time is still the same at 2 p.m. Seems there's someone who wants to interfere with our meeting. Let's keep it a secret. Until then, let's try not to see each other for a while. It would be bad if they started suspecting us for no reason. Mahiru Koizumi. They're seeing the... Yep. I saw this letter and went to the beach house at that time. Ah, the letter that ha Hiyoko has, doesn't it clearly... Yeah, it clearly contradicts the other message. Uh... Yeah. I can prove it with this! Take that! This letter... Doesn't it look like its contents are different from the letter Mahiru had? It's the same handwriting! Yep, 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 yep. Yep, yep, yep. Mahiru's letter said to meet at 2.30 p.m. But in Hyoko's letter... Yep. Yep. Interesting. Whoa! The meeting times are off! So Fuyuhiko wanted to kill... Yoko, maybe? I don't know. It's also strange that both letters wanted to change their meeting spot to the beach house. Mm. It would be plausible if one of them said it, but for both letters to say the same thing? Yeah, it makes no sense. Yoko, since you wrote it, what do you think? She didn't. Like I said, I never wrote the letter. How many times do I have to tell you? Well, you did lie a bunch, so it's hard to keep track of your lies and your truths. Safe to say a letter was forged by the killer, but which letter did the killer forge? Both. Both. I see. Yeah, of course, because it's the same handwriting. The killer must have forged both letters. So Fuyuhika, we're really going to Fuyuhika? We haven't even touched Peko. I... The killer forged them so they could manipulate their actions. Yeah, that's how we should think about it. That seems very likely. In fact, if you compare both letters... Confirmed! Just as I assumed, the handwriting is the same. The content of the letters matches too. Of course. Like this part. I was going to tell you in person, but I couldn't find you so I put this in your mailbox. This part. It seems there's someone who wants to interfere with our meeting. And this part. Let's keep it a secret. Until then, let's try not to see each other for a while. Sure. Killer forged both of those letters. It would appear so. In doing so, they were able to control Hyoko and Mahiru to do their bidding, like a netherworld puppeteer. Yeah, it's actually kind of similar to what, uh, it's a little bit like what, uh, Nagito did. So they completely tricked me. And then, Mahiru's killer. <laughs> Fortunately, that's not how this works, Yoko. Really? This is really terrible. And now he's gonna get a boner about the despair and, and the hope that'll overcome this despair. I've offered to help so many times, but the killer this time didn't discuss their plan with me at all. Wow, wow, or that. It's all my fault. I'm so ashamed of being unreliable. Oh my god, Nagito! Here we go again. Once we let our guard down, this happens. And Ibuki, unfortunately, has to be next to Nagito. Probably my favorite two characters, really, I think. We can just lightly punch him to death later. <laughs> lightly punch him to death. So based on what the letter said, you went to the beach house at 2 p.m., right, Hiyoko? Sure. What's most important is what happened afterward. What on earth happened there? That's a good question. <laughs> I fell asleep. What the fuck? Why'd you fall asleep? It's not like I wanted to. I think I was forced to get a whiff of some kind of medicine or something. Um. <gasps> medicine? Um. Th that medicine. Could it be? Did they get it from the 
drugstore? This is new. I thought that place seemed unsafe. They even have prescription medicines laying out in the open. If you were aware of that from the start, you should have done something about it. Well, she wouldn't without permission. Yay! <laughs> I'm sorry. She doesn't want to look suspicious either. When I woke up, I was inside a small closet. Oh, so you were drugged. And when I rushed out, I I saw my hero's body. Oh, so so this really was a setup. Holy shit. Okay. Okay, so someone drugged Hiyoko and then killed Mahiru and then left through the window, presumably, and then it set it up to where Hiyoko was just fucked. And that's why you ran out of the beach house in such a panic! That all makes sense. I, I was scared. It was really, really scared. Really scared that I couldn't help, but... <laughs> I mean, it makes sense, obviously. I mean, I'm not a little bitch like Hiyoko, but in that position, I probably would, uh, want to die, too. <laughs> the killer probably planned to frame Hiyoko from the start. Clearly. And for that reason, they summoned Hiyoko before Mahiru, put her to sleep, and shoved her inside the closet. This just doesn't feel like the way Fuyuhiko would operate. But, I don't know, this is, this is really strange. Like... So it's clear that whoever did this had the full intent of not only doing this, but full intent. They were thinking from the beginning, I'm going to get away with this because they're setting up their their fall guy, or in this case, their fall girl. So they set up, they kill Mahiru, and they set up Hiyoko for the, as the fall. So their reason for blocking the door with Mahiru's body was to make Hiyoko leave her footprints as evidence. Uh, everything was done to frame Hiyoko as the killer. Yep. That's horrible! I didn't do anything wrong, and I was framed by Mahiru's killer! We haven't heard anything from Fuyuhiko in a while. <laughs> Yoko, please do not cry. We believe you. Is it really okay to believe her so easily? She might be faking those tears, you know. This will never end if you keep being so suspicious. I mean, we kind of have to be suspicious, though, to be fair. Isn't that what a class trial is all about? He's not wrong. The only way to survive is to be suspicious. This is where we go to thoroughly doubt each other. He's not wrong. So if you believe in each other so easily, then there's definitely something wrong with you. I, I mean, honestly, he's not wrong. You're wrong, Fuyuhiko. We aren't supposed to doubt each other here. We're supposed to work together. But Nagito's not wrong either! The class trial is where we cooperate with each other, work hard, and aim for victory. The killer and everyone else. Two hopes attempting to grasp the one true hope. Yep. Two hopes clashing with each other is poetry in motion. That is what a class trial should be. And Nagito's got a boner again. Seriously, which side are you on? Hope, he already told you. I'm on the side of the absolute hope that can overcome any despair. Yeah. And I believe that absolute hope exists at the point where two hopes clash. Interesting. It's literally almost like they're we're literally talking about hope and despair like a literal force of energy. Your stance is neither white nor black, but gray. And you do not yearn for your life, or even for victory. Yeah, gray is a good way to put it. Jeez, I wish he'd just side with the enemy already so I can believe what he's saying. Wow. Let's stop. Believing every little thing Nagito says is a waste of time. But I don't think he's lying. I think, well, I mean, I, I think all these things he's saying are his true beliefs. Yeah, we need to figure out who Mahiru's killer is. Because if, if he's been bullshitting this whole time, then holy shit, my, uh, Nagito's next level, but... There should be a new clue contained in what Hyoko has told us. The drug. So, let us believe Hyoko's words and discuss it once again with everyone. That sounds good, Sonia. Yep, yep. The debate proceeds when you assume you can believe each other. Good job. That's the right way. That's the splendid power of teamwork. Hey, what do you think of that, Monokuma? I'm not going to let you have the outcome you want. I mean, it's not you that's doing it, though. 
<laughs> Monokuma sleeping is the best thing ever. Whoa, whoa! He's sleeping! Dumbasses. You bastards don't know anything. If you're stupid enough to trust each other, the only thing waiting for you is the bitter truth. True. The bitter truth. That may be true, but... Even so, we can't just stand around here all day. Even if what lies ahead is a cruel ending, the only thing we can do is move forward. I mean, Fuyuhiko doesn't look good, but I think it's Peko. I, I, I feel like that's gonna be the twist. Because unless we re-reveal who among us is Mahiru's true killer, there's no way we'll survive. This is gonna be the halfway point. Hmm. Bring in another chance. Well, now. now that the class trial has reached its climax, are we gonna get to the guess the killer challenge again? I would like to present the answer right here, right now. Hey! Ah, oh, you're gonna spoil who the killer is. <laughs> If I reveal the answer before everyone's ready, they'll all be shocked! They'll all feel despair. I mean, I think it's Pekko. Y you can't! That's seriously a big no-no! But spoiling it right now is innovative, don't you think? The club president and I are powerless against innovation. Hey! Who's the club president? Just Monica. So, without further ado, the answer is just kidding. Ah, you can't! Everyone, please close your eyes and cover your ears! Correct! You say Nanu in German when you're surprised. Nice. Um... I don't know what you're talking about, but somehow it feels wrong to me. Interesting. I wonder if that was somehow a spoiler. Okay, so... Ooh... I think we're doing chapter... Ooh, ooh, ooh. I think? So, I went into this expecting this to be a two-part thing. But we've been recording for about an hour and a half. If this is the halfway point, I think we're good. This is going to end up being about a three-hour part. Because I only... That was the thing. I, I haven't... I had the one spot where I got stuck, but other than that, I haven't been getting stuck. And that's what I think a big part of what made the first trial so long. You know what? This is going to be another long episode, but I want to be able to give you guys the trial in one episode if possible. And uh, this only took an hour and a half to get to the halfway mark. So let's do it. Last trial. Resume. All rise. I'm Monami. And my heart is throbbing like crazy right now. To think that the person who killed the wonderful Mahiru Kwezumi is in this room! I don't really want it to be Fuyuhiko, but I really don't want it to be Pekko. Impossible! Impossible! That's so impossible! There's no way I can believe that! But I'm going with Pekko. Ugh! I can't do anything! How annoying! But I'm just gonna believe in everyone. That's the least I can do. Everyone do your best. Don't lose to yourselves. And don't forget to save regularly. Here we go. Well, now that we've decided to believe Hyoko, now what? We keep discussing. If the killer was luring Hyoko into a trap, then something that was used there might be a clue. Sparkling justice. Because... Other than Hajime and Sonya, who was the other person that knew about sparkling fucking justice? Do you mean the letter? No, it was probably the gummy. Oh, the gummy too, but we'll get to sparkling justice eventually. Huh? Candy can be a clue? Anything can be a clue, Akane. Even your melons. Hey, when you woke up, was the gummy already there? Uh, now that you mention it, I feel like it wasn't. Interesting. Just as I thought. Just as you thought? Hmm. If the killer planted evidence while Hyoko was there, she would have thrown it away if she found it. But probably. Which means the gummy was placed inside the closet after Hyoko fled from the beach house? So the killer was just chilling there the whole time? The killer returned to the scene of the crime? 
after I left? Potentially. They wouldn't have to do something that troublesome as long as they hid somewhere within the beach house. Yep. That's impossible! There's nowhere to hide! Shower room? I even glanced inside the shower room as I was running away, but there was nobody there! Hmm, fair enough. Then, does that mean the killer came back? I doubt it. Hmm, I wonder... Where else could you hide? At any rate, the solution to that problem is connected to what really happened. That's what I think. I mean, it obviously could be related to maybe the window, but I feel like she still would have saw them. I want to play a new game. Is that what you're thinking? If so, we prepared the perfect product for you. You will dive into your own brain and log log logically discern the mysterious answer from several questions. Oh, it's called the logic dive. Okay. During the logic dive, you will control a version of yourself created from an image within your brain. Your task is to reach the goal, the final destination of the synapse course. You can move sideways with the left stick and accelerate with the right bumper, which would be, okay, R1. Press the L, the RB, and the, oh, okay. It's literally a race. Okay. Okay. Also, upon reaching a certain point, there will be branching questions in the course. It's just split in different paths, so please proceed down the path the answer you think is correct. Okay. Running questions will occur several times in one course. Please be careful. Okay. Highly recommend that you make good use of the break. That's my meddlesome advice to you. Okay. She's right. This might be a very important problem. If the killer tampered with the evidence after Hiyoko ran away from the beach house... When did the killer arrive and depart from the beach house? Think. If I just focus and think about it, I'm sure I'll be able to find the answer. This kind of reminds me a little bit of the feature they introduced in Ace Attorney Dual Destinies. Which is the last Ace Attorney game I've played. Of the main series, at least. We'll get to that soon enough. But, um... But obviously that was like super basic and not a like weird racing course game. All right, I'm gonna do it. All right, here we go, logic dive. Oh boy, I'm not, uh, what the fuck? Oh my God, what is it? Bro is, bro out here looking like, uh, bro out here's looking like, um, bro out here's looking like, um, bro, this is like a uh, freaking, I'm playing um, Kilua from Hunter Hunter over here. What the hell? Okay. Okay. Okay, I see how this works. Yes, before Hiyoko arrived. Correct. All right. Okay, this is actually pretty easy so far. Okay, here we go. Oh, no, no, okay. Okay. So it is time, so I'm trying to go as fast as possible. I think it's after. But it's where did she hide? Yep, I was right again. Oh, sick. Uh, oh, that, that was, I was supposed to avoid those. I wasn't even sure. I thought I was supposed to go through it actually. Okay. Okay, question three, yep. Oh, I was wrong. Okay. For a second, I thought the beach because I thought they actually used the water. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, they stayed in the beach house the whole time. Sorry. That was dumb. That was dumb. Of course. They stayed in the beach house the entire time, obviously. Yep. That, that was... We already pretty much established that. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got one wrong. It's all coming together. And yeah, they stayed in the beach house the whole time. But that doesn't actually answer where they were. Do you think the killer might have been hiding? You spent all that time thinking just to say something so pointless. How disappointing. It's true, though. Didn't I just say there was nowhere to hide? Do I have to explain it in another language so you can understand? There's no way they were in the fridge. It was only the top. 
The water bottles, the trash can. Maybe it wasn't, maybe they, maybe something made them dirty and they used the water bottles to wash up. It wasn't blood, maybe? Her personality got a hell of a lot more forceful once she stopped being a suspect. Yep. I like the logic dive, actually. It sounded like it was going to be awful, but actually I, the logic dive was actually super easy. I just made, I just made a dumb choice there. That was me being stupid. But the logic dive, I imagine it'll get a lot harder. I imagine it's harder on the hardest mode, but honestly, that minigame, I would rather play over the PTA a million times. No, there should have been a place for them to hide. A place you didn't look, Hiyoko. One of the things I don't like about the PTA is you're not really, like, making a choice of, like, what's the right answer, bit really, at all. It's kind of just giving it to you for the most part anyways, whereas the logic dive, you still have to make a logical string, uh, you still have to go that through a logic chain. And you have to make decisions more so. So I, I like the logic dive, actually. That was one of the better minigames. What are you saying? Stop being annoying or I'm going to make Akane bop you on the head and shut you up for good. I mean, I don't think you make Akane do anything. I really don't want that to happen to me. I need to answer by any means. The place where the killer was hiding. The place where Hiyoko hasn't looked is... Oh my god, there's no... It can't be, right? Where else could it be, though? Yeah, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Um, she said she peeked in the shower room. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Uh... It was the shower room? Yeah, I exactly. Uh Yeah, I can't move the camera at all. Crap. Okay. The closet yeah. the closet itself. The killer was probably hiding in the closet. So you wake up in the closet, but they were hidden in the closet as well and you wouldn't think there'd be anyone else in the closet. Fair enough, I guess. The closet? That's where I was locked up! I mean, that would have made it easy to do it. After you woke up, you said you rushed out of there, right? That is true! Then you probably didn't look inside the closet very carefully. But could two people even hide in such a small place? And without Hyoko knowing? And look who's questioning it. That's why the killer made sure to arrange a hiding place. I need to see the closet again, though. I don't think I have any pictures of the closet. Here we go. Killer made sure to arrange a hiding place in advance. I can only think of one place. The place, that's right. The place where the killer was hiding inside the closet. Maybe here? Crap. Okay, so behind the wetsuit somehow? No. Crap. Uh. I actually have no idea. Where the hell? Crap. The left shelf? Crap. I don't get it. Crap. Wow, wow, wow. I honestly have no idea. Where the hell would the killer hide? Inside the box. Yeah, no. Crap. No, the, 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 yeah, I have no idea where, there's like nowhere to point. Where the hell? Yeah, okay, okay, I lost. I, I literally, I have like no idea. Like where the hell? We will never give up. Yeah, we get it. Yeah, I know. We will never give up as my health replenishes and we're ready to go. Do you think the killer might have? You spent, didn't hurt? No. Okay. Okay, so they were hiding in the closet. Wow, it Here. just landed me on that. Maybe I should see where it lands me on. Okay. After you okay. You but that's yep, 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 yep. Here? Crap! No. Crap! 
I literally have no idea. Crap! Crap! Where the hell would the killer hide? Crap! Wow. Where would the killer... Jesus, that gave me a ton of damage. Where would the killer hide? Find those boxes? Really? Crap. No, okay. Find this thing? Crap! There's nothing here! Crap! There's there's literally nowhere. I I I am I am why am I so stupid? Why does this keep happening? Where the gummy is? Crap! I don't get it. I honestly don't get it. And I wish I could hide this right now so I could look, but there's literally nowhere to hide. Crap. There's nowhere to hide! Like, what the hell? There's literally nowhere to hide. I don't get this at all. Crap. I don't get it. I, I honestly, like, I don't get it at all. Like, it just makes no sense. And I have my headphones half in right now, half out, because I'm just skipping, so the audio might sound weird. I have to do this thing where I have to, because I split my audio for my mic. I record my mic. Oh, I accidentally pressed no. What the fuck? I'm an idiot. I'm such an idiot. I literally just pressed no. Well, that's awkward. Oh, f I'm such an idiot. Well, uh, lovely. I guess I'll see you guys when I get back to where I was. Okay, so uh, I purposely got one wrong uh, on the logic dive. I got the first one wrong on purpose to try and keep my score as close as possible as to how it should be, but I'm all messed up anyways, so it probably, I don't know. It might not actually be as bad because it might negate some of my game overs since I reloaded from my last save point, I guess. Anyways, I'll be back again when I, I guess I'm close enough yes, now. Just so I'll just, what? from what here is fine. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So now we. So all I really had to do was do the logic dive again. All right. I hate that I don't have much time. The clock. After. Then you probably didn't look inside. But that's why the. Arranged a hiding place. Killer made sure to arrange a hiding place of advance. I can only think of one place. That's right. The place where the killer was hiding inside the closet was. Where? They arranged a hiding place. The place where the killer was hiding inside the closet. Where could you possibly arrange a hiding place here? There's a lot of boxes, but it's neither, it's not the shelves or the wetsuit. There's nowhere else. All right. I'm just gonna. Okay, that's not an option. Here. Crap! No, okay. No, that's Crap. inside the left shelf. No. Crap. And I'm out of time again, Jesus Christ. I 
love how I get so much crap. Yeah, that's not even an option. I get like a I get, I love how I get a really hardcore penalty for choosing the wetsuit. Even if zeros run hot during time attack. Wow. Crap. And I lose. Okay. If the killer made sure to arrange a hiding place in advance, I don't know. I literally might have to just look this up. Nothing makes sense. What on earth is the answer? Okay. Okay, spot selection. What lights up? Okay, this is the shelf, this is the shelf, this is that. Up here. Where on the right self? If you don't say it out right. Crap! Okay, if you don't say it out right. So it's right here then? Okay. Crap. If you don't say it out right. Was it right here? Here! Okay, it was right there. What the hell? I apparently did not hit the third shelf. the surfboard case in the closet? I'm pretty sure they could have hidden in there. Good God. Okay, I guess. I guess. That was... Jesus Christ. That one kind of... Oh, man. Some of these are really, like, weird. Like, I guess, but... Okay. Sure. Why not? Huh? Inside the surfboard case? I mean, it makes sense, but... But the shelf it was on... It was pretty messy, don't you think? There was nothing, like... I I had barely even... tell. I couldn't even tell that was a surfboard case. Like, yeah, okay. I get Two what they're saying. were stacked on the top shelf. And there were surfboards that weren't even in a case. Yeah. Yeah, but what about the bottom? Like, like you could... Uh, I don't know if I agree with that one. Like, the bottom shelf looks like as good, if not better. The killer probably did that on purpose to secure a hiding place. I mean, that's true, but, but it's all a mess. Because we haven't been on this island that long. So the closet shouldn't have been that messy. I think. You would think, yes. We weren't allowed in that and closet. The killer was close to me during that time? Because we weren't allowed in the closet before the murder, if I remember correctly. Yeah, they were quietly holding their breath and hiding very close to you. That makes sense. I mean, that's crazy. That's baller as fuck. It's kind of like in for a penny, in for a pound, so to speak. I guess worst case scenario, if, they, if, if, if Hiyoko saw them, Hiyoko, they could just kill her. Don't you mean it's always darkest under the lighthouse? I'm sure Monokuma was loving watching this. <laughs> I shouldn't say things I don't understand, like, so to speak. Ah! Nice. Anyway, the killer hid silently, and after making sure Hyoko left, they finally left the surfboard case. Okay. I agree with that as well. Nice, Nagito. Seriously, nobody asked what you think. I'm curious what he thinks, Sakane. There's no way the killer would leave Hyoko by herself if they were trying to frame her. True. If Hyoko was left alone and ruined the evidence the killer had planted, it would have messed up their plan. It's true, though, and Nagisho's thought about this a fair bit, I'm sure. Instead, it makes more sense to think that the killer was hiding in the beach house, watching Hyoko. That all makes sense. Saying whatever you want, even if you didn't ask. Yeah, Makane. All right. If you don't want to friggin' get punched, just stand still and let me punch ya! Lol. Hm. Oh, you shut up. Then, grit your teeth. Sorry, Akane. It's not like that. Whoa. Hey, Monokuma. Can I ask you about something that seems strange to me? All right. I believe Prince Shotoku was from the future. A man from the future is always directing the flow of history. I assume that's some sort of anime or video game reference I don't get, Prince Shotoku. I'll listen to your story about men from the future some other time. Wow. As I recall, the body discovery announcement is made when three or more people discover a body, right? Sure. Is the killer also included among those three or more people? Sure, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, that's true, but, uh, well, uh, something like that is basically what it's supposed to be. Monokuma is what? 
You don't sound very articulate. He really doesn't. Jeez, you're pretty annoying for noticing something like that. Yeah, Nagito's a smart boy. I know it sounds like an excuse, but the body discovery announcement isn't supposed to be used for deduction. It's intended to create a fair trial. It's supposed to let everyone know a body has been found. Yes, but that a rule is allowed to be used for deduction. Otherwise, we wouldn't have it. So you're saying it's unfortunate that I used it for deduction? I understand your excuse, but depending on who actually found the body, it's possible that your three or more people rule could be deadly. It's true. Well, as long as I keep things ambiguous, I can respond to situations with some flexibility. Flexibility, huh? So what about this time? Is it three people including the killer or not? That's really important. Jeez, fine, fine! You want me to say it? It doesn't include the killer this time, okay? All done. So... Yoko, Kazuichi... And... Hajime? Which means... Three people other than the killer discovered Mahiru's body. What's wrong with that? Yeah? Nothing. I just thought it was somewhat strange. More importantly, let's get back to our original topic. Okay. You're the one who went on a tangent! Sure. Uh, um, we were just saying the killer was hiding in the surfboard case, right? That is what we were saying, Mikan. And after Hyoko ran away, the killer got to enjoy the simple life of destroying evidence. True. However, before we proceed any further, there's something we have to make clear. The killer blocked the roadside door with Mahiru's body before Hiyoko ran away. But what about the blood? Yeah, it's a good point, and this is where we get into Pekko. Now that you mention it, that mystery hasn't been solved yet. Nobody was bloody. It's going to be all right. If you guys have come this far, I'm sure you can discover that answer too. We probably can. Now, let's start the argument, shall we? Let's hope I don't have any more sus moments. I feel like this is becoming a, a, a normal thing every case. I really didn't had pretty much none of these moments in the first game. And to be fair, the first game is easier than the second game. I can already tell that. But holy crap, some of this stuff is like really kind of weird. The final feature in nonstop debates. Truth flashback. Hold down the... I don't know if that's triangle or square. I'm gonna assume that's square. Name it the remarks weak spot and keep it in that position. You'll be able to memorize it. Oh, this is this is the absorbed statement. This is the triangle. Hold down triangle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just change. I I think that's not. I I think I don't think it was called a truth flashback. Yeah. I tried to do that earlier, actually. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so it's it's okay, so the truth flashback is purely to argue. That's good to know. Yes. GLHF. Alright. So obviously, since they introduced it here the first time we are gonna use it. Yeah, they literally just gave us the one truth bullet to emphasize that point. Alright, let's see what we're working with. What did the killer do with the blood on their body? Maybe they simply washed it off. They couldn't use the shower, right? So washing it off would have been impossible. Oops. They didn't have to use the shower. Okay. Oh, what about the wetsuits in the closet? It's not the wetsuits. Maybe they wore one when they moved the body. Also, I got a trophy. Did they use something other than the shower? What did they do with the bloody wetsuit? They cut it up and flush. Wow. As someone who flushes their shit every morning, I can declare it would definitely clog the toilet. Nice. Maybe it's the other way around. Perhaps someone other than the killer moved the body. Maybe they were able to wash it off. Hmm. It's other than the shower, yeah. What did the killer do with the blood on their body? Maybe they simply washed it off. They couldn't use the shower, right? So washing it off would have been impossible. 
No, that's wrong. Objection. Because they used the freaking bottles of water. If they just needed to wash off the blood, they didn't necessarily have to use the shower. Nope. They could have just as easily used something else. Something other than the shower. <laughs> like what? A bunch of bottles of water. Something other than the shower that was used to wash off the blood. It was the drinks in the fridge. I see. It's this. The drinks inside the refrigerator. Couldn't the killer have used those to wash off the blood? I've seen through it. Oh, and look who's objecting. Look who's objecting. In theory, but that's impossible. But why? Try to remember the refrigerator carefully, and then you will understand that there's no possible way the drinks in the refrigerator were used. Okay. Let's hear it. Oh, man, she's getting ready. She's ready to pull out the sword. Oh, man. It's gonna be the trash can, obviously. It's true there were drinks in the beach. However, try one bottle. It wouldn't be enough to wash off the blood. I can't back down. Oh, shit. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Yes! We cr I crossed swords with Pekko and one! Assume they used just one no! drink. They could have used a bunch of them to wash it off. Sure. <laughs> Didn't I say it was impossible? There were no water bottles in the refrigerator. There were only flavored drinks with colored dyes. If you use those, the blood won't come off. It will leave an aromatic smell, too. It's irrelevant. Especially if you that alone would raise suspicion. Yep. And now I just wait? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't I say it was impossible? There were no water bottles in the room. Allow me to cut through those words. Allow me to cut through those words, Ultimate Swordswoman. No, oh, there were water bottles inside the refrigerator. They were used. How many times do I have to tell you? There were no water bottles in there whatsoever. Objection. That was after the incident, right? But before the incident, there were water bottles in the fridge. And the killer took all of those water bottles and used them to wash the blood off their body. So you're saying the water bottles were gone? Because they were all used? That's a logical fallacy. Not when they were in the trash can. It's not a fallacy. There should have been evidence inside the trash can. Evidence like a lot of thrown away plastic water bottles. Isn't that right, Chiaki? Yep. Oh, you're right. These bottles look like they may have been filled with water. Well... Now that you mention it, when I went to the beach house a few days ago, I feel like I drank one of those plastic water bottles. Huh? You should have said so sooner. That would have been helpful, yes, Kazuichi. Then, the plastic water bottles were used in place of the shower. Yep. Dousing your body with lots of water bottles is such a simple and easy to understand explanation. And who was wet when they showed up? At the, at the, uh, diner. Hold on a sec. Now that I think about it, if they soaked their entire body with a bunch of plastic water bottles, if they did that, that person would be... It seems you've realized who the killer is. Yep. And I am not happy about it. Hmm? See? Just as I thought. <laughs> Hold on. You... You know who the killer is? <laughs> is that true? Let me ask. Who might that be? I am not happy about it. If the killer used plastic water bottles to wash off the blood that splattered onto them... That killer... Mahiru's killer? Why? Actually, why? Like, I, I'm very curious to hear her story. Must be that person. Holy shit, we're really doing this. It's gotta be you, Peko Peko Yama. You're the only one! Yep. Peko, is it you? Hey, what are you being quiet for? They're accusing you of being the killer! Then I should ask you this. Why do you believe I'm the killer? Because you were very wet and sexy. I remember when we were all meeting up to go to the beach. Your appearance when you came to the diner. Yeah. Hajime and Kazuichi, why are you two here? Hey, I 
Aren't you breathing pretty heavily? I just did a little swimming. If the killer really did wash the blood off with water bottles, they'd have to drench their entire body. But there were no towels in the beach house, and it would have taken a while for the water to fully air dry. So you said you went swimming so you'd have a cover story. It makes sense. Don't just stay silent. Say something. Hold on, you bastard. You saw her at the diner. You never saw her near the beach house, right? Uh... Jesus, Fuyihiko. Pro it protecting Peko? So maybe she really was swimming. No one even saw her swimming. No. I saw her. He's protecting her! What the hell, Fuyuhiko? Uh... Huh? I... After I ran into you bastards at the diner, I crossed paths with her on my way home. So... So there's no doubt. She would have arrived at the diner from the opposite direction of the beach house. Hold on. That's strange. Didn't you just say this earlier? Yeah, what the hell? Why does Fuyuhiko give a crap about Peko? Yeah. Yep. Yep, that all sounds right. You told me you didn't see anyone. Don't try to tell me you forgot about that. <clears throat> Not so fast. It's too soon to decide she's a killer. Why is Fuyuhiko trying to protect Peko? Oh, this has me even more concerned now. We haven't established how the killer was able to leave the beach house. Now that you mention it, you're right. The roadside door was blocked. And if it's impossible to leave from the beachside without leaving footprints... And here's where the window comes into play. Then how the fuck did the killer escape? Um, why are you all fired up, Fuyuhiko? You're not the suspect. Peko is. And I doubt it's a... With Fuyuhiko, I doubt it's a love thing, even though I can actually see those two getting along. <laughs> Who cares about that? Answer me! If you have an explanation, then show me what you got! Hmm. We might have an answer. Yep. Huh? Shoutouts to Akane. Do you really? This mystery seems unsolvable. Well, if Peko is the killer, then I might just have an answer to that mystery. Did she use her sword to somehow get up there? I see. Then let's hear this alleged method of escaping the beach house. First, let's establish how the killer escaped. And then how only Peko could do it. There's an escape route. I might know what it was. In fact, the only possible I th uh, thing I can think of is that opening. Yes, the small window in the shower room. I see. Of course. If the roadside and beachside doors aren't an option, the only other thing I can think of is... Yep. Well, nothing really. Except that small window in the shower room. Yep. Huh. Don't you know how high that window is? There's no way Peko could have reached it. Mm. But what if, for instance, she got help from someone? She might have reached it by riding someone's shoulders, but then that person would have been left behind. Exactly. Is it possible an object was used? A rope, for instance? Or a bamboo sword? And what happened to the rope after they used it? And don't say something stupid like they threw it outside. Or if they used the rope, they, they wrapped it up in their thing. Of course not. That would violate the school trip rule. And there's that. Yep. Yep. That's relevant. Littering is prohibited. Even if it might be evidence, rules are still rules. You see? There's no way they'd be able to escape from that window. Oh, he's getting cocky. But don't worry, Fuyuhiko. We'll prove... We'll prove... Unfortunately... Well, I guess unfortunately for Fuyuhiko, we'll prove exactly how this could have went down. No... They just have to use an object. Chiaki, don't fall asleep on us! We just said they couldn't use an object! No, it's still with her right now. You did? I thought you were saying they couldn't dispose of an object. I see! You don't have to throw it away 
if you can just hide it somewhere on your body. Didn't it look like in the thing that she was even like tying up her thing when she was when she showed up with her fan service moment? Huh? Pekka was wearing a swimsuit, remember? Where would she even hide an object? In her big sword thing. And if you say she hid it in her special place, I'll stab you in yours! Jesus! That's actually kind of funny, though. I mean, to be fair, that is not the worst idea, I guess. No! Please don't be violent! Yeah, that's pretty violent, though, Yoko. <laughs> Even if the killer used an object to escape out the window, they wouldn't have been able to get rid of it. So the only thing I can think of is the killer must have hid it somewhere. If that's the case, is this gonna be a hangman's gambit? Focus and think, the object the killer used to escape out the window. Yeah, this is gonna be Hangman. Yep, this is Hangman. Yep, the improved Hangman's Gambit. Oh boy, uh... Sheath, maybe? Oh god, I actually don't know. Oh, bamboo, it's B. Oh, wait. Wait, how do you do it? You... Oh, there we go, okay, that's how you do it, okay. Yep. It's bamboo sword, yep. Oops, oops. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yep. Got it! Bamboo sword, baby! I yep, I got it. Let's do it. Sorry, I, I, I kind of went quiet on that, but... Heko, you carry that bamboo sword on your back at all times, right? Yep. If I recall correctly, you had it then, too. Yep, of course. Despite the fact that you had a swimsuit on, you were still wearing your bamboo sword. And she's not fighting it that hard. She's kind of, she's still gonna fight, of course, but I almost wonder if Fuyuhiko's the one we're gonna have to we're gonna have to do the PTA on. Are you saying she used that bamboo sword to escape through the window? Dude. There's no way Pekko is sparkling justice, right? I just thought about that. And and Fuyuhiko like wanted to protect her because she was getting vengeance uh in a sense for his sister that would be insane yeah peko used that bamboo sword as a step stool and escaped out the window i mean she knew that uh, sword as a step stool yeah that's tr crazy but you see i knew it i knew it was a ninja didn't i tell you a ninja could have climbed that easily. I'm telling you, her gut instincts. Ninjas know a climbing trick where they lean their sword against a wall and use the handguard as a step stool. Oh my god. Wow, just like a Japanese ninja. And of course, that turns Sonya on, but oh my god. Dude, anytime she gives us a, a hunch like that, you gotta trust it. Miss Sonya, ninjas only exist in Japan. That's not true. Well, it is a bamboo sword, but... I'm sure a slender girl like Pekko could easily use it to climb. Well, Pekko, do you have anything to say? Yep, PTA's coming. Fever time and nega time, okay. Good. That might have been that might have been what was fucking me up. I don't really remember. We'll see we'll see how the PTA goes. Yes. I think 
I think the fever time was something that I was brutally missing, I think. Yep, nega time. I say, although I save fever time for when they use nega time, I think. Yep. Yep. Sure. Ah, nice, nice, nice. That's really funny. GLHF. Hold on a sec, you bastard! Yep, I knew it. Pekko's not really fighting it, but Fuyuhiko is. You're saying she used her sword as a step stool and went out the fucking window? Then what about the sword? It would have been left in the shower room and she wouldn't have been able to recover it, dumbass! F Fuyuhiko? Why do you even care? Well, I mean, to be fair, we gotta get the right person, but obviously it's more than that. Shut up! Just shut the fuck up and answer me! If you have an answer, then fucking give it to me! Jesus, he was willing to throw away his life for Pekko, too. If she used the bamboo sword as a step stool, it would have been left behind! Pekko, why? Why are you... I am really excited to find out why, but here we go. Panic talk action. Yep. Got proof, you bastard? That's obviously impossible! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Don't fuck with me! Got proof, you bastard? Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Don't fuck with me! Got proof, you bastard? That's obviously impossible! Bastard! Got proof, you bastard? I'll sell your fucking organs! You're pissing me off! You're pissing me off! Bastard! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Got proof, you bastard! That's obviously impossible! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! If she used the bamboo sword as a step stool, it would have been left behind! Oh, it was Don't Bamboo Sword Bag. Sorry, guys. I'm actually caught straight so much. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing, honestly. Like, this panic attack action doesn't even Shut make sense to me. Like, honestly, Don't like... I don't know if I'm supposed to like Got hold it down bastard. or what exactly. If she used the bamboo sword as a step stool, it would this is the end. So it's the bag, yep. If she used her bamboo sword as a step stool, she could have recovered it with her sword back. When okay. she leaned her sword against the wall to use as a step stool, she tied her sword back to it. Oh, that's brilliant. There she is. And after she climbed up to the window, as long as she hauled the bag up toward her, she would have been able to recover her bamboo sword. That is pretty brilliant. <sighs> I see. Not just the bamboo sword, but even the sword bag too. She used them both to escape. Truly the ultimate swordswoman, that's what he's about to say. Hakane said she's like a ninja. But it's nothing as silly as that. She's the ultimate swordswoman. Simply put, only Pekko could have performed this feat. An escape plan befitting of the ultimate swordswoman. Yep. Even so, how disappointing. If you'd only let me work with you, it would have been an even greater plan. <laughs> Jesus, Nagito. No, oh, you just back off. Trying to plant those seeds for someone. Uh, um, is it true? I think she's been willing to admit it for a while, but she hasn't been Hold saying anything. You're just making assumptions. You, you don't have any proof. I won't accept this unless there's proof. And now we have to do the big one. Got it, you bastard. The comic. She's just not been saying anything for a while. It's fine. Oh, shit. Huh? I said it's fine. Saying anything more would just be an exercise in futility. Huh. She admitted it just now, right? She admitted she's Mahiru's killer, right? But is this right? What is happening? 
Even though Fuyuhiko was the one arguing with us, Pekko just admitted it so freely. Among flowers, the cherry blossom. Among men, the samurai. I yeah. commend your decisiveness, at least. I actually really like that line. Very well. If you admit it, this ends now. Let's cast our votes. What is happening? Agreed. Hurry up and vote. Jesus! What, you, what the hell is happening? Uh, hold on. Let me confirm one thing first. Well, now I don't know. The way the game's framing it. Can it wait until after the voting? No. This is important, and it relates to the voting. It's about Pekko's motive. Yeah, what would her motive be? Yeah, that's a good point. My motive? We still haven't figured that out. In the end, you had no connection to the events depicted in Twilight Syndrome murder case, right? Then, why did you kill Mahiru? I mean, her obvious say could be to escape. Hmm. So it's about that. Let's see. If I must answer that question... I must say, it was for the sake of justice. Oh shit, she's gonna say she's sparkling justice! Oh shit! Huh? Justice? In order to protect the justice of this world. Oh my god, that face. Jesus. Yeah, she's, she's pulling this out of her ass! I do not sully my hands to satisfy personal grudges. Huh. There is only one reason I kill. Oh my god. Is her VA about to go insane to try and sell this? For the sake of protecting justice. This is not where I thought the sparkling justice thing was going. You, you, what are you saying? Ah, look at Sonya, she's getting turned on. Justice is what makes humans human. It's a virtue that human beings should be proud of. Jeez. I mean, I, I mean, to be fair, that kind of fits with Pekko's character, but there's no way, I think. Justice is the eternal sun, and the enduring moon, the protective father, and the smiling mother. Okay, I take it back. That actually sounded like... Well, yeah, that actually... Uh, I kind of bought that. That kind of feels simultaneously within what we've learned about Sparkling Justice and within Pekko's character. Now I'm not so sure. Uh, hello! Earth to Pekko! Yep. If justice ever disappeared from this world... Yeah, she's going in. The world would immediately freeze, and people's smiles would vanish. Jeez. I will not allow that. It, it's fine, just stop it. Fuyuhiko. Justice must always be there to guide us. To shine bright above our heads. I don't know. Is she protecting Fuyuhiko? I don't know. This is crazy. This is so good, but I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm telling you to stop it. He's about to cry. So I must fight. I must continue to fight to protect justice. This is... Could she be... As the light of justice shines upon my mask, I expose the hearts of malevolent evil. And you see how Nagito's not really into this? I don't think he buys it. Uh. Justice complete! What the hell? This theme! What just happened? The center of justice that is pierced by justice. The lead star of justice that shines in the night sky. That would be me. Sparkling justice! Oh my god, the way she said it too! What in the face? Now then, let's execute justice! How many times are we gonna hear justice? The freaking Bobby Fulbright 2.0 over here! I get to make all my Ace Attorney references. Holy shit, in justice we trust, baby. What? Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> Kazuichi saying what the fuck? Oh my god! This is great. Pego, what are you doing? Yeah, everyone's like, what the fuck? I am sparkling justice. In the name of sparkling, shining justice. I have come to deliver justice. Dude, her eyes through that is creepy as fuck. What's going on? What's this? Chill. Pekko finally snapped. 
Possibly. That's one possibility. Everyone, please be careful. Sparkling Justice is a serial killer who claims to be an ally of justice. Clad in her various hero masks, she is a serial killer who exclusively targets other criminals. She is supposed to be... But... Huh? An ally of justice? So that's why you're wearing a mask. Yeah, that would be her argument. This mask is the dividing line. Just like various idols, the sun is revered because it lies just beyond your grasp. Huh, that's an interesting way to put it. Justice should also be the same. Uh, various, various symbols, including a star and that silly face. I, I don't get it, but, but this is becoming really crazy. It reminds me a lot of the second case of the last game, except we started with this. We didn't finish with this. What? What the heck is this? It's, it's an act. Fuihiko Peko. Who the fuck did it? Who are they trying to protect? It feels like Fuyihiko and Peko. Fuyihiko is trying to protect Peko. Peko is trying to protect. I don't know. Fuyihiko? Did they somehow both do it? Or. I don't know. That doesn't make sense, though. We've already played the PTA. We just have the comic left. We could have another PTA, I guess. Peko is the killer? Why is it turning out like this? This is turning out to be a surprising turn of events. See, I think she's being genuine this time. He's still <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> what the fuck, Monokuma? You missed the- hey. uh, Bro, you missed everything. Hey! Now's not the time for you to be sleeping. Yeah, I think you'd be into this. What the fuck? Take a look. It's a killer. What the fuck, Monami? What the fuck? <sighs> I wonder if Monokuma sleeping is a hint that, like, they're all bullshitting. This again? This is... Huh? Sleep pocket? Oh, like Toko. So what's your answer to my previous question? Why did you kill Mahiru? Because Mahiru is a criminal. This world must always be bathed in the light of justice. I must not allow even one shadow. Evil must be eliminated immediately. <laughs> this is so weird! I love it, though! No matter what, I must not overlook evil. How many times is she gonna say evil and justice? Evil? Are you saying Mahiru is- If you knew about that incident, then you must have played the game. Am I right? And because of that, I was able to find the killer's accomplice hiding on this island like a sewer rat. Jesus, Pekka. Th then, the reason you killed Mahiru was- she was an accomplice in the game. What the fuck? To protect justice, of course. The pose! Okay. What the hell? In order to protect justice, I have become its merciless sword. Wow. I, I can't tell. If this is an act, she's doing a good job. What is happening? And executed justice. Holy crap! She's such a stereotypical psychopath! She really is, which might be a hint. <laughs> She's so gross! Pekko, is this your true identity? My true identity? <laughs> I have already forgotten who I am. Jesus. It just shows my determination. My determination to protect by throwing away what's most important. Wow, that's... Is she giving us a hint here? My determination to protect by throwing away what's most important. I'm willing to become anybody to shower this world with justice. Ah. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> And now she's making laughs. And look at look at freaking uh, uh, Hiyoko over there, the shaking. I guess it's also with Chiaki, where they can't, they're, they're, they're shadow and they're not because of the freaking shaking of the camera. Oh, I can't stand this anymore. Let's just end this farce already. No, I. 
But here's the thing. I If Pecco didn't do it, I don't know who did it. Like, I I was all in on Pecco, and now I have no idea what's going on. I... Uh, end it? Yeah, like, Hajime doesn't think it's Pecco. I don't think it's Pecco, but I don't know who. He's right. This... We need to end this already. The killer. In the end, there's no mistake that it was Pecco all along. Let's go over this incident one more time, and then let's end this. All right. All right, closing argument. Okay. Huh. Morning of the incident, Mahiru met. Yeah. Yep, that makes sense. Next one to arrive at the beach house was... I mean, it was Mahiru, but I don't think... Well, I guess this has to be, right? No, okay. Shit, okay, that's fine. Uh... Yeah, the mask. Sparkling Justice mask. Yep. Killer looking crazy as fuck. Uh... Now then, time to wash off the blood. No. Um, where should I hide? This goes here. Yep. Okay, that's it. Stock two. Here we go. Now let's go back to the beginning. Let's go back to the beginning. Back, back, back. Okay. None of those. In order to lure Mahiru and Hiyoko, yep. The next one to arrive at the beach house was, nope. Now then, time to wash off the blood, nope. First one who found the body was, nope. Jesus, that face of Hiyoko's. Hiyoko left a big piece of evidence. Uh... Well, no, it was Yoko. That was the footprints. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Yoko ran away. Yeah, there we go. To retrieve the bamboo sword, I must do this. Yeah. Yep. And then, okay. Yep, stock three. Let's go back to the beginning again. Do, do, do. So, Pekko really is the killer. This is crazy. Morning, the incident Mahiru met. No. Uh, let's see. Okay, so right here, this is, yep, that makes sense. And then we have water bottles, right? Yep, water bottles right there, yep. And then we have, what is this? The first one who found the body was... Yeah, Yoko wakes up. Yep. All right, last stock. All right, final, final ones, final ones. Let's go back to the beginning one more time because we still have the very first one left. Mahiru met, yep. Yoko, yep. And then, if we go all the way over here, Jesus Christ, we have Hiyoko left a big piece of evidence, the footprints, yep. And then, that's Here's it. Here's everything that happened in this case. All right, let's hit the music. The incident began this morning, when Mahiru spoke to Hiyoko. Mahiru most likely played Twilight Syndrome Murder Case, the video game provided to us as the motive. Yep. She probably wanted to discuss it with someone else who also appeared in the game as a character. This is so cute. Hyoko accepted Mahiru's invitation, and they promised to have a more detailed conversation about it later. It's about to go in full murder mode, too. 
Um. However, someone else overheard their exchange. The killer. The killer eavesdropped on their conversation and used their promise to devise a specific murder plan. By preparing a specific item, they plan to manipulate the two's actions. It just feels really weird, though. That item was the letters. They sent fake letters to both Mahiru and Hyoko. I'm wondering if there's any chance that we do the closing argument and it's still not Pekko, but it, it, it clearly, yeah, it's definitely Pekko, isn't it? This is weird, though. I like how weird it is, though. The letter Mahiru received told her to come to the beach house at 2.30 p.m. And the letter Hyoko received told her to come to the beach house at exactly 2 p.m. Yep. By providing different times, the killer was able to lure them to the beach house separately. Hyoko totally trusted that letter, showed up at the beach house at 2 p.m., just like it said. Yep. And was drugged into unconsciousness by the killer lying in wait. I don't know, something about that just doesn't feel very pecko, but I guess if she's a serial killer, then we don't really know her well. Sure. After putting Hyoko to sleep, the killer immediately hid her inside the closet. Yep. So they could frame her as the killer later. Yep. At 2.30 p.m., Mahiru arrived at the beach house. And also framing Hiyoko as the killer, is that really justice? Like, there's also that part of it. She was completely unaware that she had been targeted for murder. Approaching her from behind, the killer struck the defenseless Mahiru with a specific weapon. And why would... Why the bat? Like, it makes no sense. Why would Pekko use the bat? Well, I guess if she's trying to frame Hiyoko, I guess. But... The metal bat that was left at the scene of the crime. Jesus. The bat was brought down onto the back of Mahiru's head. And with that, she took her last breath. Jesus. According to Mikan's autopsy, Mahiru died instantly. So she probably never knew who killed her. Not that that part's relevant, but... But, I mean, the, so she probably never knew who killed her part. I mean, I guess... With that, the killer achieved their goal of killing Mahiru and began to tamper with the crime scene. I mean, I guess it's relevant if they, like, tried to leave a message. They dragged Mahiru's body so that it blocked the door leading to the road. Also, the mask found at the scene of the crime was something the killer personally left. I'm not really sure why. My guess is, it's something similar to a calling card. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. That's how the crime scene we discovered was created. Yep. However, by moving Mahiru's body, the killer got blood splatter on them. Wow. Plus, the shower room had no water because it was out of order, so they couldn't wash it off. But the killer expected something like that to happen. Instead of the shower, the killer used something else to wash the blood off their body. Huh. They used plastic water bottles that were inside the beach house refrigerator. Yep. We can assume they carried the bottles to the shower room before the sequence of events had happened. In place of showering, they washed the blood off their body with water bottles instead. Yeah, makes sense. However, they had no choice but to dispose of the empty bottles in the beach house's trash can. Sure, because of the rules. Littering is against the rules, and it would have taken too much time to throw them away somewhere else. After the killer washed off the blood, they hid in a specific spot inside the closet Hyoko was in. Yep. The killer hid inside the surfboard case that they had already emptied beforehand. Sure. After some time had passed, the sleeping drug used on Hyoko wore off, and she woke up. I can imagine how badly Hyoko must have panicked when she came out of the closet. I mean, she made plans to see Mahiru, who lay dead right in front of her. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up. From the shock and panic of being considered a murder suspect, Hyoko fled from the beach house. Sure. Because of that, she left footprints in the sand. Everything was a trap set by the killer to frame her. I mean, it's a really good trap, too. After Hyoko left, the killer finally came out of the surfboard case and placed a gummy that they brought with them to shift our suspicion toward Hyoko. It makes sense. Ironically, placing that gummy is what helped clear our suspicion toward Hyoko. Finally, 
The killer began preparing to escape from the beach house. They couldn't risk leaving their footprints in the sand, so they escaped the beach house using a different route. Wow. The small window in the shower room. And that's where the ultimate swordswoman talent came. However, that window is rather high up and can't be reached easily, which is why the killer used her sword and bag. The bamboo sword they always carry with them. The killer took the bamboo sword out of its bag, tied the bag to the sword's handle, yep. and used the sword as a step stool to reach the small window while holding the sword bag in their hand. Wow, that's crazy. That's brilliant, though. I love that. As long as they're able to reach the window, all they had to do was pull the bag to retrieve the sword. It's a kind of a form of a locked room mystery type situation there. Yep. And so the killer left the beach house and appeared before us as if nothing had happened. But their wet hair and swimsuit didn't dry right away. There also weren't any towels at the beach house. So when the killer met up with us, they said they had been swimming for a while as an excuse. Yep. So how about it? This is the truth behind the incident you caused. Isn't that right, Peko Peko Yama? Damn. That was cool. Really? I see. And what of it? And what of it? She's like, totally cool with it. I haven't done anything to be ashamed of. Fair enough. Well, what are you saying? You killed Mahiru. And Mahiru was an accomplice to a murder, so that's her counter. counter. Wrong. I punished evil in the name of justice. Or that's another way to put it. That's no reason to condemn me. Whatever. Let's hurry up and vote so we can freaking kill this weird, crazy bitch. She's definitely weird and crazy. There's no way you can kill me. Uh, what? Justice can never be killed. You should all know that as well. Jesus, um, okay, Pekko. What are you saying? <laughs> what was that, Gundam? To protect what's most important to you. You must be prepared to throw away something equally important. Understand? Okay. Uh, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Yeah, I guess she really is shining justice, and Monokuma just doesn't care. Then I shall be direct. Justice must carry on in order to keep justice, to keep me alive. You all must give up your lives. Okay, Pekko. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, she's lost it. It's not serious. It's justice. Oh my god. If I fall here, who will combat the evils of this world? Now, follow your hearts of justice that reside within you all and save my life to protect justice. I don't think that's going to happen, girl. Damn. Yeah, I'm kind of with Kazuichi on this one. Jesus Christ, Pekko. She turned out to be a great character, but not in the ways I could have ever imagined. Hurry and carry on justice. Give me a break. Who's going to die for you? If we let Pekko go, we're all going to get killed. For the sake of grand justice, a few sacrifices are unavoidable. You know, it's interesting. Blind hope, and now we have blind justice. It's interesting. There's a theme here. I mean, blind hope referring to Nagito, but there's a bit of a theme here that's building in this game. A few sacrifices? That's... Don't worry. The justice that you give your life to protect will never go to waste. I can't stand her anymore. Let's vote already and execute her. I don't know. Are we? Because we keep going down this chain. Um... However, before we do that... Monokuma, the vote! Hurry up and let us vote already! Is... Is Sonya gonna say that she's not sparkling justice? <sighs> I'm awake! Alright. Ah, he finally woke up! Yeah, he slept through the whole damn thing, basically. I've heard your story! Well, I wasn't listening, but who cares? Nice. Now then, please pull the lever in front of you and cast your vote. I want to hear what Sonya has to say. Who will be chosen as the blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? I want to hear what Sonya has to say. <laughs> Such heart-pounding excitement. Oh, no, we're, we really are going straight to the vote. Okay, obviously we're going to vote for Pekko. All right. 
And there's Peko. Okay, so now she's gotten her vote. Pardon me, can we please have a little more time? Yeah, what the hell? Peko just got voted. Um, pardon me. Can we have a little bit more time? Please let us continue our discussion. Continue our discussion? But isn't the voting over? That was literally an Ace Attorney moment too. God, I love, I do love how Danganronpa 2 feels more like Ace Attorney games than Danganronpa 1. Yes, but I cannot help but feel strange. Something about this is definitely strange. It is. Ipeko is very honorable in one way or another. Huh? Strange? What do you mean? There's no doubt that Peko is the killer. That is true, however. As a serial killer enthusiast, you're wondering if Peko is really sparkling justice, am I right? Yep. Huh? Hey, Miss Sonia isn't a serial killer enthusiast. She just has a little more passion about them than most. No, she's a serial killer enthusiast, maybe even fangirl. That makes her an enthusiast. Or fangirl. Honestly, it felt strange to me too. I mean, there's a distinct difference between what we know about Sparkling Justice and Petco, right? Sure. A uh, distinct difference? Sure. You know, Sonia describes Sparkling Justice like this. Let's hear it. Justice complete. The center of justice that is pierced by justice. The lead star of justice that shines in the night sky. That would be me. Sparkling Justice! What the heck was that? That is Sparkling Justice catchphrase, and she didn't say that. An unknown serial killer has a catchphrase? I read it in the magazine in the library. There's only ever been one person, a journalist, who has interviewed Sparkling Justice. The article was written in their native language, so I tried translating it. The language. I see. So that's what it was. I think I've got the difference. Nationality. I see. Take that. That's right. According to what Sonia said, they're not Japanese. The article was written in their native language, so I tried to translate it. Yep. If she had it translated, that means it wasn't written in English, right? Or, or English, yeah. I mean, it, it's weird with translations, but you get the point. Huh? Yes. The magazine I read was written in Spanish. Spanish! So, Sparkling Justice's catchphrase was no doubt written in Spanish as well. Which means the journalist and Sparkling Justice are both... From Spain? Or, well, it doesn't have to be from Spain, but Spanish. What? They speak Spanish. They can be from Spain, they can be from Mexico. There's a lot of places they could be from, but... All this time, I completely misunderstood. When I first heard about those serial killers, Genocide Jack and Sparkling Justice, I just assumed both serial killers were from the same country. That wasn't the case. If so... Peko. You're not sparkling justice. There's no way that's possible. If she if she if she's about to say poor K, I I I am I am throwing something. Or if you insist that you're sparkling justice, can you try saying that catchphrase in Spanish? Would you be able to do that? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, spaghettios. Hmm. It appears that the time has come for this mask to come off. However, that's perfectly fine. It's no longer necessary. She got voted out. And even if you find out now, it's too late for you all to do anything about it. Because she got voted out like she wanted. My duty has already been finished. Interesting. My duty as a tool has already been completed in full. Oh. Uh-huh. Looks like she's back to normal. She was always playing an act. Does that mean if she... Is that really... Oh, man. 
really like a samurai. She was a tool to, uh, a, like a true samurai, in a sense, like a tool to her shogun type thing. That mask has fulfilled its purpose, just as I have. She's ready to die. What do you mean? Fulfilled its purpose? Too late? What are you getting at? Now that you've already cast your votes, is what it means. Yep. What the fuck? So either she didn't do it, or this she did, and well, that doesn't make sense though. The implications that she didn't do it. Hey, huh? be clearer. We're asking you what your purpose was. I have no purpose. I am just a mere tool. She's. Oh, is she the? Is she maybe the? Is she the the the, the spy? T tool. What do you mean? Is she the traitor? She called herself a tool. Which means someone else used her then? <laughs> of course. <gasps> a tool cannot do anything on its own. Well, there's that smile again, but this time it's really Pecco. I see. I finally understand. Well, I did have a sneaking suspicion all along. Of course, Nagito would recognize it if anyone would. What do you mean? I mean, besides Pecco and Hyoko, someone else was also at the beach house. Sure. S someone else? There is proof that establishes that fact. Try to remember it. So maybe it was when Kazuichi saw it that the body in the discovery announcement went off, not when, uh, not when, uh, well, God, I don't even know. It's the body discovery announcement, right? Yeah. I see. Yeah, they'll explain it. Are you talking about the body discovery announcement? That's why he asked about it. Yep, that's right. I mean, didn't Monokuma say so earlier? Yep. 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 And we got this voice last time, but... That announcement is made when at least three people discover a body. Sure. And in this particular case, the killer, Pekko, is not one of those three. And that's why Nagito wanted to clarify. If that's the case, it would mean only Hyoko and Kazuichi discovered the body, but... Okay, yeah, yeah. I see. That leaves us one person short. Potentially the killer? So that means there was one more person in the beach house. Okay. Plus, the fact that Monokuma tried to hide that truth from us by being flexible with his own rules. That's such a vital clue that it could alter the outcome of the trial. Like an accomplice, for example. Yep. No, that's not it. Huh? Am I wrong? It's possible you are wrong. Yes. From your basic way of thinking about it, you are wrong. Didn't I tell you? I'm just a tool. That means I'm just a simple tool to be used by that person. Oh. The, uh, traitor? Therefore, that person would have the strongest motive out of anybody else here, right? Fuyahiko? It has to be, right? You're the only one! It has to be, yep. Is it Fuyuhiko? Yep. I see. Now I finally see the connection. The connection between the motive and the incident. Yep. But even if it's the motive, it's just a game, right? There's no reason to believe it's even true. Jesus. Would you call a game like that a strong motive? If you believe it. No, the events that occurred in the game should have definitely occurred in real life. There's overwhelming proof of that, too. No, okay, it's not. We haven't used that the whole time, so I wasn't sure. But we haven't used that once yet. Um... Girl E's crime scene photo, victim's crime scene photo. I can prove it okay. with this. I imagine either one works, maybe. I didn't think it was necessary to confirm it if it didn't have anything to do with Mahiru's murder, but... There's still more. We haven't used the fucking picture of the three girls yet, unless there's, unless there's evidence that's just there to mess with us, which would be great if there is. There's no doubt that game is based on actual events. That much is clear if you saw the ending prize. This is so freaking good. Holy shit. I can't believe this is case two. This is insane. 
Yeah. Photos awarded for beating the game are not actual in-game screenshots. They're all actual photos with the surrounding scenery cropped out. That's a good point. You knew all along, Fuyuhiko, didn't you? Yep. You knew whether or not the first victim in the game was actually your little sister, right? Because whoever beat the game first and received the ending prize. Got the pictures. Yep, 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 he had the envelope. Yep. It was the envelope, right? The person who received the ending prize. It was you, wasn't it? Yep. Oh, shit. If you were shown a photograph of your sister's dead body, you'd have no choice but to believe it. It's pretty dark. Even so, you wanted to deny the truth. That's why you sent those photos to Mahiru to confirm it. Hey! Why are we talking about Fuyuhiko? Who cares? Because... Pekko is the killer, right? Pekko is the killer, yes. But not the mastermind of this case. But we already voted! Exactly. That's why I told you. You're all too late. Yep. As I said before, I exist as nothing more than a tool. I had no motive for killing Mahiru. No reason to kill. Not even the will to kill. Took the samurai thing really hard, doesn't she? I was simply used as a tool. As long as I am a tool, I cannot defy my orders. Jesus, Becco! Uh, hey, what's going on? Can anyone give me a simpler explanation? Fuyuhiko ordered Pekko to kill Mahiru. It means I'm not the killer. Oh. The true killer, who used uh. me as their weapon to kill Mahiru Koizumi, was Fuyuhiko Kuzuryu. I mean, that's one way to put it, I guess. Sure. What? <laughs> They're just like, what is happening? What the hell? Yep. I see. That's what you were aiming for all along. Yeah, it's like we can admit it now because the votes happened. No, I have no aim. No, exactly. But my young master does. My young master planned this from the start. She's the ultimate swordswoman and he's the ultimate Yakuza. It makes sense. Young master? Yep. Yep. That is the truth of this case. Oh my God, this is crazy. I'm sure you realize it by now. But it's too late. You cannot undo the vote. That's a problem. Well, it yeah, it's true though, you can't. If Pekko's allegation holds up, that means our vote was incorrect. Well, it depends on how Monokuma sees it, because Pekko did kill. If physically speaking, Pekko did kill. Yeah, it depends on how Monokuma sees it. In that case, the person who gets to live is just me? Uh, Fuyuhiko didn't even think about that. That's nuts! No matter how you look at it, that's completely insane! I mean, it's up to... Yeah, this is crazy, but I imagine Monokuma's gonna say, well, Pekko physically did... You have to physically do the killing, and so he's gonna kill Pekko, and Pekko's gonna accept it because Pekko doesn't care because she's a tool. This is wild. Pekko's an interesting character. Holy shit. I can't wait to do her FTEs. How would Pekko be a tool in the first place? She's not a person in her mind. Pekko is a legitimate human being! She would argue against that. That's not for you to decide. It's for Monokuma. That's also true! The votes have been cast. All we can do now is wait and see what Monokuma decides. That is true, and she's like accepted either a result. What the hell? Yeah, I know. What the hell? It was, first it was Nagito, and now Pekko is like just the two people I thought would survive the whole game. I don't know which one. Well, okay. I, well, yeah, I was going to say, I don't know which one's crazier. I think Nagito's crazier, but both of them are amazing. Holy shit. And it just goes to black. Is this going to be the end of case animation? Yes, it is. This is going to be like a B. Yeah. Not bad, not bad. I'll take it. I'll take it. That was a- it was sus. Hmm, I'm in a bind. 
and what a bind it is. Yeah, he's got to make a decision. And before he just kills both of them, what the fuck? I guess for now, let's take a quick recess. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Oh my god, he's doing that thing again. Wait, are you serious? Wait. Wait, really? Hmm. Ahem. Although there were some twists and turns along the way, the one who killed Mahiru Koizumi is... Uh, hold on a sec. Also, time unknown. I like that. <laughs> sorry. Okay, I'll wait. So sorry. I'm just hesitating. Hey! There's no need to hesitate. No matter how you look at it, Pekko's the killer. <laughs> Why? Hey, hey! Why? <laughs> well, that's obvious. You're not a tool. You're a freaking human being. Well... If I'm a human, then I'm not a tool. If that's what you're saying, you're wrong. You just don't know. You just don't know that there are people who only exist to be tools. People such as myself. Only exist to be tools? Oh, even the song is like, the flow is different too, with the, in the uh, top right. Hey. What does she mean, Fuyihiko? Uh, he doesn't want to talk about it, but... <sighs> Pekko and I grew up together, yeah. Pekko was basically his guardian for all time, like his protector. Um... Are you two childhood friends then? In a sense. No. It's completely different than that. It's master and servant, literally. Right after I was born and abandoned by my parents, the Kuzuryu clan took me in. I am nothing but a tool. They gave me a reason to exist. I'm to fulfill my duty as my young master's property. Or if you want to go as far as to slave, you know, you could use that term too, but master-servant dynamic. What? Property, you say? I only joke about this shit. <laughs> it means she's a hitman arranged by my clan to work directly under me. Oh my god. If my young master is attacked, I must defend him as his shield. If he intends to kill, I must be his sword. That is such a cool shot. Oh my god, she's literally like, I love the they're freaking babies. He's crying and she's just holding the sword. And they're getting older, she's got her sword. And they're getting older, more badass. She's she's badass, a little the dragon effect, and you know, and then and then of course he's in the seat being all like a Yakuza boss and she's behind him being his sword. That is my only reason for living. Damn, this is some deep shit. Before I am human, I am my young master's tool, first and foremost. Jesus. Until this body of mine can no longer move, I shall fulfill my duty until the very end. This is a really cool way to link two different characters in this game. And it makes sense that they would both go to the student. Or they would both go to the, uh, to Hope's Peak, too, because... Yeah, and of course she would make sure she'd be good enough to come because that's part of her duty as a tool. She'd be defective otherwise. That is... But that is... You are wrong. You are not a tool, Pekko. Because if you are a tool, <sighs> then what was all that time you spent together? Nothing. Jesus! Huh? I was ordered by my young master to behave, just as I was ordered to interact with you all. Jesus! What? Our professional relationship doesn't exist on this island. We're just fellow high school students now. Right after we arrived on this island, that is what my young master ordered me to do. You fiend. That is why you were hiding your relationship, you mean? I also love that Fuyuhiko really cares about Pekko and wanted to protect her and felt really bad about it. Like, I love that. It's like, even though that was the dynamic, Fuyuhiko's always cared about her. They really show a lot. Like, even though it, it's a weird dynamic because we don't know the details here because Fuyuhiko supposedly did order a hit, but also he wanted to protect Pekko. So, like... He does have love in his heart for Pekko. No. Which makes sense. He grew up with her his entire life. It's not as if that started the moment we arrived on this island. For that, my young master has always told me to hide our relationship. 
My young master loathes relying on his household's power. He even hates me, the tool given to him by his household. That's wrong. That's wrong. I am nothing but a tool. No matter what I am told, I am nothing but a tool for killing. If my young master intends to tool kill, it is only natural for me to act as his tool. Then, the one who tried to kill Mahiru wasn't you, it was... Fui Hiko? Damn it. It is what it is. When I thought I beat the game, I was suddenly given these photographs. Damn it! I don't understand. Why is my sister in these photos? Don't fuck with me! And she's... she's covered in blood! What does it mean? Why can't I remember? How come I don't even know if my sister is dead? You... Tried to confirm it with Mahiru, and that's why you wanted to talk to her? So... Yeah, I sent her the photo because I wanted to make sure she'd respond. She never replied back to me. Not only that, she started avoiding me, too. But... I'm pretty sure Mahiru was confused, too. I mean, we all were. Before anyone played the game, we didn't even know this incident had happened. That's why, even if we were told that we're connected to it, there's no way we could accept it. Um... Um... You know, when Mahiru spoke to Ibuki, she mentioned something about this. Oh. Yep. Oh my my! Yep. Okay. Hmm. Sure. Huh? Yep. Um. Hmm. But. Damn, I don't even know how to make amends. Are you serious? Sure. <laughs> hmm. Oh, there's always tomorrow. How brutal of a line that is. There wasn't tomorrow. Oh. I think that's a new sprite for Chiaki. She wanted to discuss how to make amends, but Hyoko was the only one who accepted her invitation. <laughs> I should have gone too. But... It was rather convenient for you, wasn't it, Fuyuhiko? You can make use of their plan to meet each other alone. You could easily lure Mahiru into a trap, right? Hey. By calling both of them to the beach house, you were able to pin the blame on Hiyoko. What the? Seriously, what the heck? An eye for an eye. That's the world I live in. Well, the sister was murdered. The reason that happened was because of some person here. Damn it! I have no choice but to kill that person on my sister's behalf, right? And so... My young master thought of a plan and executed it. I want to use a bat as the murder weapon because in that game, that's what was used to kill Girl E. For revenge, clubbing the person to death the same way my sister was killed just seemed to make sense. Even if it ruined my disguise, it was the only thing I could do to avenge my sister. That is... So that is why you... killed Mahiru with the bat? <sighs> but still, I believed her up until the very last minute. But the game was just a work of fiction. But even so, that bitch! Hey! That game is actually real. Are you the one who killed Girl E? Why, you? Hey, I don't want to hear about that. But... The fact that your sister was killed is terrible. It's unfortunate, but... Why? You shouldn't have killed that girl. Shut the hell up! Who cares about that? Just answer me. What do you know about that game? What are you saying? You had no right to do that. Nobody has the right to judge others for their crimes. Revenge is just wrong. Jeez. Want me to be honest? This whole time, I was acting like a coward. Even after I called over Mahiru, I was still trying to find an excuse to not go through with the plan. <sighs> but after she said that to me, that all went out the window. I got really pissed off and grabbed the metal bat that I hid under the bench. But at that moment, <laughs> young master called for me and made me kill Mahiru. Huh? Lying again. Young master, I am finished. I don't think that's what happened. What? Y you, are you saying that you killed because you were ordered to? <laughs> A 
tool is not defined by its will, but by its actions. <laughs> I don't get this at all. I'm like a musician. I'm like a, a, the, the epitome of a free thinker. Of course. Well, I mean, when I'm not a sellout. I like being a sellout too, especially for girl love. It is slippery when wet. Well, of course you don't understand, because humans are completely different from one another. Everyone's birthplace and upbringing are, is different. It's obviously impossible for them to understand each other. Hmm. So everyone just pretends to be understand and pretends to be understood. Be quiet. Hey, you're too annoying. Just be quiet. Yes, indeed. Okie dokie, I'll be quiet. <laughs> Afterwards, just as my young master planned, I proceeded to tamper with the scene of the crime. However, I also considered the possibility of being found out. <laughs> so in order to get you guys to make the wrong choice, I decided to make use of that serial killer story. <laughs> it cannot be. You insisted that you were sparkling justice in order to make us hasten our votes. Mm. So we fell for it. We fell for a trick all along. <laughs> That's right. You guys have made the wrong decision. He voted me a mere tool as the killer, unaware that my young master was the true killer. That's obviously wrong. Oh, hold on. Don't like don't act like our loss has been decided yet. No. It should be decided already. Isn't that right, Monokuma? This is troubling. I'll admit, all this talk about Peko being a tool sounds pretty persuasive. When you approach it from various angles, it makes sense that Fuyihiko is actually the true killer. <laughs> uh, hold on, I'm telling you to hold on! I see. So for Peko, Fuyihiko himself is your true hope then. On his behalf, you killed Mahiru, and now you're trying to sacrifice us so that you can protect him. Great! You would only go that far because he's your one and only hope! Wrong. I have no hope. I am just... <laughs> a tool. <sighs> well, even if we ask her, she'll probably just play dumb anyway. Now then. So I'm gonna uh, ask someone else. Hey, Fuyahiko, what do you think? Huh? About what? Hey. Is Peko just a tool to you? Using that tool? Surviving by sacrificing Peko and the rest of us? <laughs> Is that your hope? <laughs> what? Uh, Hold on. What's the use of asking Matt something like that? What? Huh? You seem distressed. A mere tool doesn't panic like that, right? Jeez. Peko, be honest. Are you trying to protect Fuyihiko of your own free will? Hey. Fuyihiko, can you tell me the truth? The fact that she killed on your behalf, the fact that she lied to us by acting like the killer, are those all things you ordered her to do? Is that the truth? Huh? I... I... Um... Uyuhiko. Yeah. I know you hate our guts, but... Huh? If you listen to Pekko, we're all gonna die! Yeah. I... I... Young master. You just have to tell the truth. I was only following your orders. You just have to tell them that. I... Vihiko, you mentioned this before, but... This kind of situation, interacting with others, will just shorten your lifespan. Those idiots, Byakuya and Teru Teru, are proof of that. <laughs> Plus, it'd be frustrating to be held back by affection when it's my time to kill. You... You're still saying that? Of course. I'll sacrifice the lives of everyone here if it guarantees my survival. You don't really feel that way, right? You're not that kind of person. Because if you were, you wouldn't be hesitating. Like you are now. Right? <laughs> Young master! Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. I'll get a little Toko vibes there. There's no need to hesitate. Young Master, please just tell them the truth. Young Master, you were the one who ordered me. I just did as I was told because I am a tool. Hmm. Uyuhiko, 
This could be considered your ultimate choice. Regardless, either way, you'll still lose Peko, but... Hey, if you insist you're the killer, just as she said, you can sacrifice us and survive alone. <laughs> or... Would you rather reject Peko and fight alongside us against despair? Which one will be your hope? Let's hear what you have to say. And yeah, Peko's gonna like... It's gonna be like her ultimate despair if Uyahiko rejects Peko and decides to keep fighting alongside us, which is like, oh man, it, it's, it's, it's so great. Damn it! I... I... Young master, I am finished. He, you... What the hell did you do? You, you already know, right? What's going to happen after you kill someone? I did it because I know. There is no way I can let that happen to you. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Pekko. Do you remember what I told you when we first arrived on this island? Our professional relationship doesn't exist on this island. We're just fellow high school students now. Yeah, she what? She didn't accept that. You need to run. Got it? Just let me take the fall so you can get away. Young master, that is impossible. Sh Shut up! I'm ordering you not to worry about me! Oh, Pekko's too loyal for that, like a samurai. There is no way I cannot worry about you. Of course. I am... Um... My young master's tool. A tool to protect my young master. Without an owner, a tool serves no purpose. And it's a very interesting parallel. I haven't talked about this, but she's the ultimate swordswoman, and she's Fuyuhiko's sword. And it's a very interesting, because the sword is a tool, a weapon, and she herself is the weapon. And it's a very interesting kind of narrative, like, uh, parallel that they've made with this Peko character. God damn it, we are done with that crap! Why won't you listen to what I'm saying? Regardless, I will not flee. Besides, I'm fairly certain they'll discover the truth soon enough. Th then, why did you... I have a plan. Yep, it was all her. Huh? A plan? Yep. Please do not worry. I promise I will keep my young master alive and return him safely home. You, you idiot. What do you intend to do? I intend to fulfill my duty as your tool. Yep. Now please, go! Hyoko will be waking up soon. After you leave, I must block the door to the road with Mahiwu's body. Yep, just explaining her plan. Hurry! Damn it. You better run away. Got it? Just forget about me! Forget about the Kuzuryu clan! <laughs> That's not how she operates. You better escape! How about it, Fuyuhiko? Please, tell me the truth. Sorry. Sorry, Peko. I guess... I couldn't go through with it after all. Young master! I'm a disgrace. Because... That actually... If that's actually what I have to do to my survive, I just feel ashamed of myself. It mean I can't live without depending on someone, something. I just feel disgusted with myself. Peko. And if I admit that, it means you really are just a tool to me. How many times I tell you I don't want a tool given to me by the Kuzuryu clan? Young master. Uh oh. Oh my. So this is how it turned out. Too bad. And here I thought it'd be more brutal and heartless. Man, how disappointing. Which means everything happened thanks to her meddlesome actions. Why, you? There's no way a human that meddlesome could ever be considered a tool. Hey, Monokuma, you knew this all along, didn't you? You knew about what Peko and Fuyuhiko discussed. Jeez. Well, it's obvious now, I mean. That's why you have surveillance cameras. You were just having fun, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Man, even if it was an act of desperation, Peko's claim was surprisingly interesting. <laughs> You're actually the first to try to influence the, the outcome of the trial like that, implying we've done this in another game before. <laughs> but too bad. You're definitely the killer. Peko. 
two with the hearts is the killer. Sorry. Echo, I'm sorry I couldn't fulfill your request. Even though you did all that to provide me the chance to survive. Okay. Fuyuhiko's surviving. He's not dying in this game. There's no... I, I, I refuse to believe that after all this, this narrative with him and Pekko, there's no way that he doesn't survive. I think Fuyuhiko, I'm locking in as a survivor of the whole game. Uh, Nagito, to the end. I don't know if he's going to survive, survive, but he's going to make it like pretty much to the end. But Fuyuhiko, I think, is the first character, besides Hajime in all likelihood, that I honestly think will survive the whole game. <sighs> I had a feeling it would turn out like this. Huh? Young master. You have a kind heart despite being a Yakuza. That's why you question your position and constantly worry about it. For you to sacrifice someone else just to escape by yourself? I believed you wouldn't accept that so easily. <laughs> We've been together ever since we were children. Even a tool would understand that. What? Then why? Even so. I wanted you to escape. I wanted you to escape. Sorry, Pekko. I wanted to protect you. Pekko. This is really sad. I mean, I'm not crying or anything, but... Oh, I really feel this. I love this. This is like a really cool dynamic. I mean, obviously, Tog uh, uh, sorry, Toko and Tagami had their dynamic. The master-servant dynamic of sorts, but... Obviously, that was mostly just one massive meme, but this is like a much more serious take on that and obviously a much more tragic take since both Toko and Byakuya survived the first game. I am terribly sorry. I will not be able to serve by your side until the very end, young master. Goodbye. <sighs> and I'm sorry for what I've done to you all too. It may be a selfish request, but please forgive my young master. And please do not cause a senseless killing such as this ever again. Jesus. Uh, of course. <laughs> Echo. <laughs> that will do, Monokuma. Why don't you start it already? I will never feel despair. Just so you know, I will never feel despair. As long as I am a tool, I am fully prepared to die. So, I imagine she's gonna get stabbed and sliced like a million times or something. So cool! <laughs> so cool! But will you be able to maintain that composure until the very end? He might, or she might, Fuyihiko, I don't think will. People who act as proud as you always shed tears of despair in the end. <laughs> Now then, let's begin! Young Master Fuyuhiko. Please permit me to make one final selfish request. So? Didn't I tell you not to call me Young Master? I want you to remember. The tool, Peko Peko Yama, who used to stand beside you. I would like it if you remembered that. <laughs> That's it. Aw. Obviously, he, she loved him. However you want to phrase that. How many times do you have to keep? I don't need any tools. <sighs> you did say that. Poo-hoo-hoo. Poo-hoo-hoo. Then let's begin! The punishment time brimming with despair! Jeez. Why don't you get it yet? Thrills, chills, kills! This time for the ultimate swordswoman, Peko Pekoyama! Why? You stayed by my side all this time. Why don't you get it? Now then, I've prepared a very special punishment! You better fucking say what you need to say, Fuyuhiko. You better say it now. I prepared a special punishment for you. I... Never needed a sword or a shield. I needed a friend. I never needed a tool. I needed you. S so. Come on, say it. You didn't need to become a tool. 
Aww. Let's give it everything we've got! Oh, and this is so like the Terry Terry thing, except this one's way worse. Like, the Terry Terry thing, yeah, it was sad, you know, his whole deal with his mom and everything. This is, this feels a lot worse. It's the same thing where Monokuma's just going on, like, let's start the, let's start the punishment, let's bring the despair. You just... You just needed to be yourself. Wow. I, never... I never wanted a tool. I just wanted you. Only you. Aww. Young master? Why? Why couldn't you understand? We've always been together ever since we were kids. Let's go! It's punishment time! I think she's gonna try cry tears of love, joy, happiness to hear those words at the very end. Please, Echo. Don't go. Oh, Fuyuhiko's gonna fucking cry. I need you. Don't leave me. Oh God, Fuyuhiko. Young master. Oh, this is this is awful. And now he's gonna- it's not even the fact that Pekko's gonna die, even though this is gonna make Pekko, like, Pekko feel like th that sorrow. This is gonna make Pekko want to live, which is- makes it doubly worse, because she's gonna feel despair, because right when she wants to live, she's not- she's gonna die. But what's worse, even than that- re-death wish, by the way. Um, but, uh, I- it's the fact that Fuyuhiko's gonna have to watch Pekko die. Young master. Aww. Here we go. Oh boy. Reach for the stars again? Let's see if they play the same music. Wow. Yep. Pekko's been find guilt found guilty. Is it... Yep. Reach for the stars. The interesting Oh, it's like an old samurai. Yep. And there's Fuyuhiko. Uh... Oh. One woman army. Okay. Okay. Uh... Uh, what is... Uh... Um, what the hell? Uh, he just went blind in one eye. What is happening? Um, that was creative. Wait, really? He killed both of them? Wait, what? Oh my god. I mean, I get it, but oh my god. This cannot be. Even Fuyuhiko? This is bad. This shouldn't be allowed. People dying so easily, falling like dominoes. You bastard. What is this? Oh my god, I, I thought they did the eye thing. I was like, Fuyuhiko's involved in this. This is going to be even worse. And then they did the eye thing, and I was like, oh, he's going to be blind in one eye. And then he just gets... Whoa, what just happened? I totally... Well, yeah, I mean, it was meant to be a plot twist, but I read that as like, oh, she was fighting for her master, and, 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 then, and then they get her. But I was reading that as like, oh, you know, it was going to be the thing. And I literally just said Fuyuhiko was going to survive the whole game because of this. But I guess that's another way to go about it, is if you kill both. Oh my god. This is a lie, right? Pekko! Fuyuhiko! There's a lot of O's going on here. What the hell, Hajime? Such a waste. For heaven's sake, this is just the worst. Jeez, what a waste. This conclusion. What a waste. This is why she should have just discussed it with me. Damn it. 
It was supposed to be a clash between two hopes, but it was crushed into something so unpalatable. Ooh, look at that. Nagito is starting to really hate Monokuma now. That I like. This is interesting. Oh. You, you're still talking about that? You. The hell's wrong with you? Aren't you pissed that two of your friends got killed? Such despair. I am pissed. And I even feel sad and hopeless. But still. Isn't that right? It's going to be alright. This despair is worthless. <laughs> even this despair is just a ladder to a bright, shining future that awaits us. Ah! <laughs> The higher the ladder, the brighter we can shine. That is the unmistakable truth. Hmm. Calling me a ladder, huh? You say some pretty interesting things. <laughs> In a way, your misguided thoughts of hope should be... Remind me of... Him? Wait, 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 wait. Him? Hmm. I don't really understand what you're saying. Wait, wait, are we talking about what? Listen carefully. Anyway, I shall make a declaration. We will definitely destroy you. <laughs> <laughs> the hopes of all the ultimates here would definitely, completely, utterly destroy you. There won't even be a strand of cotton left when we're done with you. That's your future. How much longer are you planning to say such stupid things? Don't you understand? Even Fuyuhiko died, you know. Not yet. He's still alive. Oh, he is! He is! He just lost an eye! What? Everyone! Fuyuhiko is still alive! You serious? <laughs> Fuyuhiko! Yeah, yeah, I don't want to scream right now. Frantically, we rushed over to Fuyuhiko's side. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Is he going to be okay? Do something! Hey! You need to save him! Hey! Yeah, Mikan, you got to get on it. Uh, I'm trying! But his blood, he won't stop bleeding out! His pulse is getting weaker! Can't you... Can't you do anything about it? God damn it! Oh, this would be even worse if he just dies out like that. Uh... Uh... Hmm... Well, serves him right! You're so stupid. Were you filled with hope at, the, hope at the thought of saving her yourself? That's why you ended up like that. You stupid brother. Well, what do you say laid out about? You need to hurry up and save him. I don't believe it. Ha, huh? surprise order? What the heck? Why do I have to burn my precious calories just to save some Yakuza scum? That's wrong. It's your duty to save him. Huh? Duty? Hey, hey! Because it's written in the school trip rules! They alone will be executed, true. If only the Blacken gets executed, then Fuyuhiko shouldn't be allowed to be executed. <laughs> well, if I could, I would do something about it right now. But since my magic stick was taken away, I'm practically powerless. Hey, hey! But you, you should be able to do it. Unbelievable. Jeez, I guess I have no choice. Fine, fine. Well, there's no way I can violate a rule, even if it's me. So... Fine, then. I'll save him. R really? Like... Eh, I was actually going to do that all along, so I'm already prepared for this. Okay, Fuyuhiko surviving the whole game. Okay, we're back on my initial thought. Okay, they're messing with- this game is messing with me right now, but Fuyuhiko's gonna survive. Huh? Prepared? And that's when it happened. A siren began ringing from out of nowhere and gradually grew closer and closer. What the hell is this? Oh, uh, an ambulance? Apparently, yeah. Monoskuma Critical Care Center, I guess, yeah. Just leave the rest to me, Dr. Killgood. Wow. Dr. Killgood, you've already killed your patients. We gotta get this patient to the Monokuma Hospital ER and get him under 24-hour observation stat. Nice. 
So, I'll see you later. Okay, Monokuma. And after he said that, the ambulance containing Monokuma and Fuyuhiko vanished from our sight. What the fuck? Oh. Um, is it really going to be okay to leave this to Monokuma? I mean, what choice do you have? Jesus Christ, that case was insane. And we're still not done. This is going to be a really long episode. I really should start breaking these into two. But I was like, oh, we'll get there here in about three hours. And I think we've been going for about three and a half hours now. Damn it. It can't be helped. It's not like there was any other way. Perhaps. He's going to be fine. He's probably going to get better and come back to us again. It was just I was like at like about exactly around an hour and a half or so, which is kind of my minimum for an episode. So I didn't know if I wanted to stop it at the halfway point. And I would have recorded the whole thing either way. It's just whether split it. So just for this one, you're going to get another big episode. I would highly expect that the last four trials will probably be two parts, I think. But we'll see. <laughs> You're right. He's definitely going to come back and tuck a lot of smack as if nothing happened. I am really interested to see the rest of Fuyuhiko's character arc because there was a lot of sauce for him in this. Hmm. Then all we can do is wait. <laughs> Why do we have to wait for him? I mean, he caused Mahiru's death, you know? However... We must put that aside since Pekko has already been punished. I mean, in the end, he really didn't cause Mahiru's death, even though he was thinking about it. Uh, or else we will not be able to advance forward. Fall, my tears. Fall, my tears. There are no second chances in life. We cannot return to what has already transpired. There is no other way than to move forward, like an arrow of light piercing through the darkness. <laughs> D damn it! I guess are exciting if a shit stir like him ain't around. That's one way to put it. I didn't realize it, but I was wishing for that too. So we're down to six guys, six girls, because we lost two guys in chapter one and two girls in chapter two. So then there were 12. We're down to uh, Hajime, Nagito, Fuyuhiko, Nekomaru, Kazuichi, Gundam, Yoko, Chiaki, Mikan, Sonia, Akane, and Dabuki. And then there were 12. From the bottom of my heart, I really wanted him to return. And then again, Fuyuhiko. I don't want anyone else to be a sacrifice. Well, unluckily for you, we have four more chapters. End of the chapter. Oh. And so, the class trial ended. We still can't see the real ending that we really want yet. When that finally arrives... What will happen, have happened to us by then? No matter where I look, no matter what possibilities I look for, I can't see our future, not even a speck. As if we were in a boat, floating unreliably in a vast, dark sea, we were just left there alone. Only one word could explain our situation. Despair? Yep. We couldn't find a more suitable word than that. Oh, is it going to show us where the countdown is now? Fifteen days, ten hours, uh, fifteen days, ten hours, ten minutes, and fifty seconds. Alrighty. You guys can see it, right? You can see this countdown, too? Talking to the player? Four people are already gone. We took our time preparing the hope fragments, but now we're no longer able to gather them. Honestly, I'm not so sure anymore. Whether it's better if we let them leave this island, or if we shouldn't let them escape. Huh. Interesting! Wait, who are you talking to? For those kids, which option is hope and which is despair? That's a good question, Monami. But I guess there's no time to hesitate. If this countdown reaches zero... This is so interesting! What does this mean? I love how they do these, like, end of chapter, like, dun-dun-dun things. That guy will probably take over our plan's final stage as well. That guy? Is that Nagito? Or the, the mastermind? 
What lies beyond that is the foul resurrection of the ultimate despair. What lies beyond that is the foul resurrection of the ultimate despair? Are we talking about the group or are we talking about Junko? What does that mean? And the continuation of the biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. Well, that's a tragedy. Th that cannot be allowed. We must prevent that by any means necessary. Okay. Even if we have to pay the ultimate price, I will definitely prevent it by any means. What does that mean? What does any of this mean? I want to go transcript here. Okay. You guys could see it too, right? Or you guys could see it, right? You could see this countdown too. And we don't know who she's talking to. We don't know if she's talking to the player or something else. Poor people are already gone. We took our time preparing the hope fragments, but now we're no longer able to gather them. Okay. Honestly, I'm not so sure anymore. Whether it's better if we let them leave this island or if we shouldn't let them escape. For those kids, which option is hope and which is despair? I guess there's no time to hesitate. If this countdown reaches zero, that guy will probably take over our plan's final stage as well. That guy. Nagito? Monokuma? I, I, I don't know. What lies beyond that? is the foul resurrection of the ultimate despair and the continuation of the tragedy. The ultimate despair? Are we talking about Junko? Or are we talk- it, Do we mean the group or do we mean Junko? I hate that they're both called that. It's so confusing. And they're doing this on purpose. They're trolling me. I mean, there's no way they could re- well, I don't know at this point. I, I don't even want to rule that out anymore. Um... I assume they mean the group, but we already heard about World Ender. So, this is interesting. This is kind of implying that the tragedy's already ended, but the world is still fucked. And that the Ultimate Despair group is potentially no longer around. Interesting. I cannot be allowed. We must prevent it by any means necessary. Even if we have to pay the ultimate price, I imagine death. I will definitely prevent it by any means necessary. By any means. Everything is for the sake of a future filled with hope. I mean, that makes sense. Interesting, Monami. Interesting. Oh, that was so interesting. Sea and punishment, sin and coconuts. Hmm. And then there were 12. Danganronpa. To be continued. Holy fucking shit. Ladies. Death lies in video games. The Black Dragon Blade. Very cool. Yeah, I would like to save my current progress. Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that was episode nine, I think. I don't know. That was the second class trial in Danganronpa 2. And oh my God, was that amazing. You know, there were a few hiccups in the gameplay. A few moments again where I got stuck. I don't think it was as bad as the first one. So maybe it'll weirdly get better. I don't know. It feels like there's a few moments that just were not very clear. Like I, the one thing that really I think annoyed me was the where was uh, Peko hiding and like the surfboard thing. I thought that was just very weird and like, I don't know. It just didn't, I don't know. It just wasn't visually clear to me at all. So I didn't really like that one. Um, I feel like everything else was fine, I guess, but, um, cause I got stuck on the one moment, like the one nonstop debate, I think, but overall I liked the logic dive. I thought that was really fun. And, uh, yeah, I, I, overall I had a lot of fun with this case. I thought all the twists were great. I kind of had, you know, I kind of figured out the Peko thing after a while and, and she was certainly one of the people I was suspicious of, but Man, I, I, even though it makes all the sense in the world, given her character, I, I never really considered the whole Fuyuhiko Peko angle like that. That was a really cool twist. And I really enjoyed where they took that and the kind of duality of their two characters. And I think that's really interesting. And I would actually love if, I mean, obviously we're not going to get this, but I would love that if, if you did their FTEs, if you could have some type of like dual FTE involving both. Uh, Fuyuhiko and Peko. I think that would be really cool if you like get all of both of both of their hope fragments and it's like 
the you know it's like after the game like in the school mode or whatever it's going to be called in this game that would be really cool something like that because obviously their their history is so intertwined because they grew up together which gives them an interesting dynamic that's different from really any two characters we've seen in Danganronpa so far. So I think that was a really cool way to do that. And now we're going to get to see Fuyuhiko's character without Peko and see how he evolves and grows as a character after the events of Chapter 2. It's going to be really, really interesting to see all that play out. I can't wait for it because I thought... This was phenomenal, and like I said, I'm super interested for Fuyuhiko's character. I'm very sad that Peko left us. I didn't expect that, but here we are. Peko is gone. She was one of my people that I expected to... She was one of my... At the beginning of the game, when I was trying to predict people that would survive the whole game, even though now, post-Chapter 2, I got Hajime and Fuyuhiko as my survivors. Nagito as a gonna make it to the end. I don't know if he's a survivor or not. He's gonna make it near the end though, for sure. I feel like, but I have Fuyahiko as my second survivor along with Hajime right now. Cause there's, I feel like after that, there's no way Fuyahiko's gonna die. I could be wrong, but I feel like after that, he's gonna make it through the whole game. But we will see. Very interesting character. Very interested to see where they go with him. I feel like he kind of, in a sense, fills the Byakuya role of this game in a lot of ways, even though he's a much different character than Byakuya. And I feel like, similarly to Byakuya, he's the character that's going to have some of the biggest uh, character development in this game. And he's already had a lot in this chapter. So I can't wait to see where they take that. And I can't wait to see what they do with the other 11 students like I as I went over a little while back the surviving 12 at this point um you know six was the magic number in the first game I wonder if six is going to be the magic number again in this game we'll have to see but uh things are things are going very well and this was an awesome second case an awesome second chapter I am loving this game I I, I'm definitely enjoying this game more than the first game. Uh, even though there's been a few things in the trials that have, that have, been, that have gotten tr either tripped me up or, you know, in a few cases annoyed me, whatever, you know, that's that's been a little sus. But overall, I'm absolutely enjoying this game more than the first game. And I think, I mean, it just it feels like with all the stuff they're building, I feel like it's only going to continue to escalate and you know they're building up so much that i imagine they will pay off by the end and you know tie things into the first game and there's going to be so much that happens it's going to be insane there's so many teases so much set up that I, I i i feel like i have enough trust in this game in this series to believe that they're going it's all going to lead lend itself to a you know glorious moment at the end that's really going to bring it all together but anyways this game has been incredible so far. I'm actually blown away how good this game has been in the essentially, I guess at this point we're basically in the we're a third of the way through the game more or less because, you know, we've done chapters 1 and 2 and we have 3, 4, 5 and 6. Of course, we've also done the prologue, but you know, even if the later chapters are potentially longer, we'll I'll just say, you know, for estimate's sake, we're probably a third of the way through the game. Um and uh, yeah, it's been an amazing game, and I honestly can't wait to see uh, what else Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair has in store for me, because uh, it has been a freaking journey so far, and I imagine things are only going to get crazier as we jump into Chapter 3 in the next video. So I hope you guys are excited. You guys got a really long video, I think. Um, I think this video is going to be another one of those really long ones, and I don't really want to... I, I really need to split these class trials into two episodes, but I hope uh, you guys are going to get to enjoy another treat, another uh, full trial, single video uh, trial uh, episode. So uh, hopefully you guys had fun with it. I'm sure you guys enjoyed it a lot, even if me getting stuck was probably... I don't know, that might honestly be the most fun parts for you guys. I have no idea, but... Uh, Oh man, what a freaking episode. So anyways, if you guys want to support the channel, you can check out the Patreon down below in the description. There's other links in the description if you want to check those out as well. And uh, yeah, without any further ado, it's time for me to bid you adieu. 
the Flaming Shark, signing out. Hope you guys have a wonderful, fantastical day, and I'll see you next time with another video. Thanks for watching. Peace.